everyone. This is the third time we're recording this. Be- you gotta like, <laughs> listen, man. You gotta here. be like, three, two, one, and then I'm gonna hit record. <laughs> also, maybe tell your guests we gotta record our own audio. Um, this we're we're you joined know? by a guest who has been on this show before, who has had to go through this process, but it's it's you know kind of dumb. His name is Bob. I Will. gotta I gotta let you know that I don't I don't make my guests record their own yeah, audio when they're yeah. on my podcast. That's because yours is video. You just gotta go on Google Chrome, Google Chrome, sign into Google Hangouts. If it was this, I would just fire no, up OBS. I don't want to hear any of that. Uh, speaking of not wanting to hear any of that, I gotta tell you about some housekeeping stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean, dude? Gotta pay the bills. <laughs> You can become a member, youtube.com slash fanatics4. Wolf Den, you know, also, also twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you got Amazon Prime, yep. you get a free Twitch sub. Also, mm-hmm. patreon.com slash that cyber channel, right. which we learned. You, but you didn't say Bagel Denizen. That's because I, I made an addendum because this is a new podcast. Uh, all new one. one. Ep- garbage. Episode number three because Bob's stupid. Uh, but speaking of Bob being stupid, tell me about your dumb life today. What are you doing? No. <laughs> Parker, how's your better life going? <laughs> it's going great. I got off work early and I'm happy to be talking. <laughs> great. Yeah. We already did this intro bit. So we're already fed up. And I blame Bob. He's stupid. Uh, we're playing video games. Bob, what are you playing, Bob? I play this week. I played Labo. Right. Then I played Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Old. On my analog Mega SG, and I got, I'm, I've got i gotten farther than I think I've ever gotten so far with the and Knuckles. Uh, you guys missed in the, in the lost recordings in his 30-year life. <laughs> it's the farthest he's <laughs> ever gotten in the Sonic with 3. With my original cartridge. Also, I'm not 30. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> then I played Smash Brothers and Katana Zero. Okay, so Sonic, give us your quick little blurb on that. What are your thoughts on Sonic? Yes. We talked about how you said that you played it. Right. You haven't played it in a very long time. Right. You played it on PC. Yes, and also GameCube. Yes, they don't. They haven't ported Sonic Three much. Right. I don't think you could even play it on PC anymore because there's some... Because PC is dumb it. and you can't play everything always. They haven't made like a like a legit reason, but I'm pretty sure it's a licensing issue with the music. Right. But they haven't really... Because there's a the whole mystery whether or not Michael mm-hmm. Jackson actually did the music or if they kind of stole it from Michael Jackson. Do you Jackson. think anyway, there's any chances like at all that they would try to get it on the Sega Genesis Mini Classic? Oh, absolutely. I think they're going to try, but I don't think I, I, I if they're not porting it to anything mm-hmm. else, like it wasn't on the it's not on the classes collection for the switch. Right. So I don't see why it would be on the mini. Yeah. But then again, Nintendo yeah. pulled a lot of strings to get Star a lot Fox of stuff on their stuff. classics. I mean, that's might be one of those kind of situations, I guess. And they have a lot of licensed games. Yeah. They have Mega Man. Mm-hmm. And if they're taking any Mega notes Man. from Nintendo, they know that like the IP is key on that. Like that's yeah. a, a yeah. big reason why the PlayStation Classic is dumb and nobody wants it because <laughs> it's like yeah, at, they don't have all the mo- must have games. You said it. Uh, PlayStation screwed it up royally. Yep. Uh, Sega has never made a good classics console. This is true. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's very po- actually they had on their old one on the at games one they had Sonic Three. It just run like trash. The audio is all messed up. Hey. Uh, I'd assume that they learned their lesson because they were about to do it all over again. And they're like, oh, wait, this is dumb. Let's can True. this project and do a better one. Presumably. Yeah, they fi- they basically fired out right. games. Do we mm-hmm. know who's doing the, the next one? M2, I think. I think it's the I think it's the guys who made the classics collection or no, the Sega Ages oh. stuff. Yes, I think that's right. Okay. So so they know what they're doing. So that was old game hour with old man Bob, who's 30. Uh, <laughs> now we're going to talk about a new game that's inspired by old games. It's called uh, Katana Zero. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? You played it at PAX several times, and now we're playing it. Not So I played it at PAX from the death. two years ago, and then I skipped a year, and then I played it this year, and now I play it in my home, and it's great. I love it. It's great. It's, it's f- for a 2D game. Guess what I'm going to say? Guess what I'm going to say? There's a lot of narrative elements. <laughs> There's a lot of swears. They say an F word. They say an F a lot. Yeah, they do. 
and it kind of throws me off like i never really played a lot of pixelated games that have that kind of language so i'm kind of like thinking yeah. like oh this is like this is like earthbound you know this is mario <laughs> and it's like f and i'm like oh snap all right there's also a lot of drug yep. use and violence True. but that's an earthbound it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> True. So I'm used to that. It's really good. As someone who hasn't played it, I do have a question. Does the... So I've seen just like the first 20 minutes or so of it. Does the whole like it replaying your successful run get annoying at all after you've played a whole bunch? Or I, you just... I just through? immediately skip cool. it. It is kind of annoying yeah. though. <laughs> like, so so the whole the whole reason mm-hmm. behind that is uh, you, you, you playing the game is you figuring out how to tackle the situation and then once you f- figure it out and finish it it plays the the security cam footage of you actually mm-hmm. doing it which is right. in so theory that, like that's pretty much how every video game ever it works in the, yeah. in the sense of like you know like pretty much how many marios died to actually get peach but like no nah, i mean you just took that one time and all the other ones were just dreams of it or whatever yeah that's the real that's the real <laughs> uh-huh. part. montage the real the, part is the final is not dying <laughs> the thing that like yeah. it, it would be more clear that he's like thinking it through mm-hmm. if everything around it wasn't like so like diegetic like mm. within the world of like you're rewinding but you don't rewind to your mind right. so like if they made it more like a dream sort of like it's clouds and the like around it or whatever like with the vignette then i'll uh-huh. be like okay i understand well, it. he's thinking here and this is the tape well he's high as hell all this time. is true <laughs> mm-hmm. that's so. the truth um and i don't know if you see video uh imagery when you're high <laughs> never experienced it <laughs> But the game, the, the the meat of it is the gameplay. We always talk about the the, the narrative elements. Oh, and how the whole uh, how like it has like the illusion of choice, right. where like you're picking all of these like different uh, dialogue options, but a lot of them lead to the same thing. Yeah, there's the little girl. Supposedly, we talked about the little girl. <laughs> yeah, we talked about how you hung up on the guy and meet the first dialogue. <laughs> right. You just kept hanging up on the guy and continued but, to uh, several times. Yeah, that's supposed to change something in the immediate part after that, but I don't know what. Maybe I'm going to die young, before I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> in real life, because um, of the game? Hey, you never know. You man. never know. I didn't get to 30 yet, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, 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 the gameplay is the meat of it. You get one, one hit, you're dead. You go through little tiny chunks of levels. Um, there's you can there's a slowdown mechanic. There you can uh, you can hit bullets back at people. You can pick things you up, can, and throw them you at can people. Dive under the bullets. Yes, and that, yeah, you're like invincible when you roll. There's a uh, stealth element. It's really good. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the stealth because I got to be patient, and I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. There, we we both just played a, a level uh, where it makes you want to do stealth but it feels like it's impossible right so i just i just did it without i tried uh really hard to do it stealth and not kill anybody but then i got to the end of the level and then they penalized me for it but i was like wait i feel like i i couldn't well i i could i tried to do it i couldn't do it so i was like screw it i'm just gonna go through and then it was like you killed people how dare you yeah because i like i felt like i could do it but again it was a patience thing it was like okay i got to this part and you we talked about when you were streaming it how um like as you do something and you fail at it you get better at that one specific part so you run through that and then you get to another yes. part and you bump your head against it up against that until you're like oh, okay that clicked too and like you eventually basically speed run it and i assume that that's like their intention because it's mm. like you understand all these bits and pieces of it and then at the end your video clip is like flawless as if you were like mm-hmm. just dope from the start <laughs> right so bob are you saying that in that one bit where the first time through you didn't kill anybody and then the second time through you did kill people and it seemed mad at you both for doing both options? No, it, I, I messed that up completely. Oh, gotcha. but, uh, yeah. I, I, I tried really hard to do it stealth because mm-hmm. they tell you don't kill anybody and then something happens and it feels like... Something happens and it kind of like makes it really hard to do it gotcha. stealth. Um, so I tried. I did it like 30 <laughs> times and I could not 
not kill anybody. Mm-hmm. So I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna kill everybody. And I killed everybody, and then at the very end of the level, they say, what the hell's wrong with you? We told you not to kill anybody. And then they, it, it feels like the, it, it felt like there was totally a way to do that stealth, mm. and I just didn't figure it out. Yeah. It would be interesting in that kind of thing. I mean, I, you know, I'm curious what ending you would have gotten for that section had you done it completely stealth. But, like, especially with this vibe of game, it would have been fun if, regardless of how you finished it, they were still disappointed in you for one reason or another. Yeah. Just because, like, I don't know, that seems fun in a game <laughs> to where, well, well, like, they're never I, satisfied. <laughs> That goes back to us thinking about the whole like illusion of choice mm, right, thing. Yeah. Because there's, I don't want to ruin it, but something else also happens in that level that's completely out of your control that they would have been mad at you about anyway. Right. <laughs> so no matter what, they're going to be mad at you, that's but they cool. were even more mad that I killed people. Yep. Yeah. And there's yeah. like small, like, or I assume that they're small because we didn't beat the game yet. There's like small mm-hmm. narrative things that like we experienced that were different where it's like uh, you have a therapist and there's like sometimes he'll give you your drugs and sometimes he won't. And when Bob talked to him the last time, he didn't give him his drugs or whatever, but he gave me the drugs. No, he did. You said he did? I think he always does. He didn't give me. me the drugs the first time that I went to talk to him. Cause oh, I you're just, an asshole. I kept saying, give me your drugs. <laughs> 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 and then he was like, don't interrupt me. And I was like, give me your drugs. And he's like, all right, I think it's time for you to go home. And I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. <laughs> so, okay. So like, again, just from the bits I've seen, the red text that shows up there, can you actually select that? Like while they're still talking? Th- that That's yeah. that's your interruption. That's oh, you being an asshole. Oh, nice. Interesting. So that, that's what AJ's doing when he goes, yeah. give me the drugs. <laughs> it's the therapist is talking. And he's like, shut up. Give me the drugs. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. But after, it's after cool. that it's like this, interaction, this audio that like comes up and it like makes it sound like it's like crashing through. It's like really, it's really satisfying. Mm-hmm. After that That's interaction cool. with him, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go through this whole dialogue tree because it's like it doesn't feel good when he's like, all right, you got to leave, <laughs> like because you don't know what's <laughs> what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. That's a big part of like understanding who this character is because this guy knows, you know, like he gets it, and he like is even describing your dream to you. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, yeah. how do you know? Are you planting this dream in my head? Probably. But yeah, that's that game. Uh, another wholesome game that we both played. Yes. <laughs> Similarly Nintendo wholesome. Labo. Yes. Ex- <laughs> Get it for your kids. Just as wholesome. Uh, hashtag free product provided by Nintendo. No. <laughs> Not for Bob, though. Well, uh, well, actually, we're on your podcast. Yeah, exactly. So you I can mean, say either that. way, it was provided by Nintendo for somebody on the podcast and or stream. Yeah, but, you know, I don't like it. I, don't I like mean, it. hey, you know. <laughs> I, hey, to be fair, when on the first, I don't know which recording, we did this three times. Uh, when you brought up your Sega thing, whatever it's called, I noted that that was provided by them. Yeah, so, but it kind of wasn't because they also kind of just hey, took my money and didn't give dumb. me the one I paid for. You know, you're stupid. We established I'm supposed this. to get a second one of these. <laughs> and then I pulled up the email to email them, and then I didn't. <laughs> and then I went, oh, I haven't been recording. Yep. Was I supposed to be recording? Yep. And here and we are. What a Sometimes. Tale. And here we are. <laughs> Listen, we've made it further than we did in the last that, one. Now this is all new. Absolutely. absolutely. These are facts. The, the long and short of it is sometimes we get free stuff to talk about the thing. So you understand it and you potentially save money if you don't like the thing. Anyway, we played Labo. What, yes. what do you think about your blaster? Because it's the only thing that you have. <laughs> also spent $40 on that. Um... <laughs> The blast. I was a little disappointed in the amount of mini games that the blaster yes, had agreed. because the ones that it has are awesome. Yeah. Mm. But uh, and they have that. It has a really nice little campaign with like actual cool boss battles. Right. But it's short, and uh, I would have liked to see a little more. But it's it's still really cool. Did you mm-hmm. try the multiplayer thing? The like hungry, 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 hungry hippos. I tried situation? it by my lonesome. <laughs> uh, it's stupid. Is it stupid really or is dumb. it stupid by yourself? <laughs> I think it's I think it's stupid and it would be really hard to explain to somebody. Would it? Like how to do it. But isn't it just hungry hungry hippos? Yeah, but then you can like call the hippos towards you if you hit a certain button. You oh, get a Oh, okay. You some of the hippos want different fruits and you can tell by hitting another button oh, yeah, which yeah. like shows the fruits that they mm-hmm. like so it's like not as easy as just shooting fruits into hippos mouths right you know interesting unless you could nerf yourself and be like i'll just shoot the fruit into the hippos mouths that's true most kids are probably going to do that but then, 
But then you're going to do that, and then the hippo's going to be like, oh, I don't want this fruit. And then you're going to be like, why didn't the hippo <laughs> why want the hippo that fruit? Why did the hippo go to the other guy? <laughs> like, it's, I think that whole thing's stupid. Mm. Um, so for the, like, the included VR things, like, I mean, most of them are really all of them except for maybe like four are pretty vapid where it's like there's not much to it it's like drop the things on the burger you made a burger now look at it that was the worst one <laughs> did you was hit this button oh a piece of a burger dropped hit another button hit another button oh the next piece of the burger <laughs> dropped and there i mean there's there's part of it where like there's a kitchen and you can make the burger kind of I saw that and I was hoping that was, I was like, oh man, it's like, uh, what's that VR game? That freaking uh, 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 um, the job simulator, job yeah, simulator. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, it's job simulator. And it wasn't anything like job simulator. Yeah. It's, you like couldn't really do anything in that in that mini game. Right. And a lot of stuff is just like shapes where it's like, this is a stove, but it's really just like this like cylinder that's cut off and it goes up and down and up and down. And that's it saying that the thing is cooking. Yeah, the food was a block of yellow. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is this butter? And, it doesn't... and then you open the cabinet and there's a fish in the cabinet. <laughs> it was cool, like, going through the area and, like, seeing what's what's up and, like, what like finding little Easter eggs and stuff. But there weren't enough. Right. There could have been a little, some more, a little hidden gem. But, I mean, there were a lot of mini games. Mm -hmm. All the mini games were, like, didn't have much to them. Mm. But there were a lot of them. Right. Like, that's definitely so, like a tech demo sort of situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was satisfied with the amount of mini games in the whole thing overall. So, like, ask someone that, well, it's kind of hard to ask you that question. Um, and, like, I know that being like, is, is it worth it for you to spend $40 on this thing? Because you made more than $40 by. <laughs> <laughs> paying $40 no, no, for the thing. I take I don't consider that me making a video out of it when I when I tell other people if it's worth right, it. Right, I understand I think that, it's but I mean like to it. you specifically. Like do you think like that was a purchase that I like and I'm not like disappointed. Like would you have bought that if you didn't have a channel is my question. I don't think $40 is that much for what you got out of it. Yeah. Me. And and I only played it for like a couple days you know mm -hmm. and i'm probably never gonna touch it again I, well until uh the updates for mm -hmm. odyssey and uh breath of the wild come out but because the uh, the main thing for me when like i think about that and also like extrapolate it into like would i recommend this to viewers or whatever um i always think about the fact that most vr games are more expensive than that and they're mm -hmm. just yes. as like frail and yeah. and the amount of content that you get like a lot of vr games are in that 40 dollar price range and they're like six hours that you get out of well, them just building the, the labo the is longer people than who are gonna the people who are gonna get this are people who want to spend a lot of time building the thing right so right there you're already getting your money's worth then if you want to make your own games mm -hmm. that's something that i don't think any of us really touched on yeah. like when we played it ourselves i don't know about you parker mm -hmm. um i don't even think parker but has it. i sure don't <laughs> oh well then you definitely didn't <laughs> uh but that's something that has a lot of depth right you can make a lot of awesome stuff and the, those I feel like there's a lot of overlap between people who would want to build the labo and then make their own games. Yeah, and even if you don't want to make your own games, again, the mini games are still awesome enough where you're like, oh, I built this thing and I get to play on it and it looks awesome. Right. You and know? something and you pass it off to like a family member and you're like, yo, check this out. Whoa, what is this world I'm in? I thought yeah. I was looking at cardboard. I think that's right. another big thing of like VR in general is, uh, I mean like i have some friends that have uh like the vive or whatever and i feel like a huge selling point of it isn't just for you buying it to play games for yourself but is the kind of communal aspect of like showing people who right. have never tried vr and like that the whole thing is an experience to where right. i you know i'd almost want to get uh labo vr more for just like showing my wife and my friends that come over that have never done vr like you know my parents or something if they're ever over and be like well look what this thing is uh Whereas, you know, but actually me playing it and using it by myself will definitely, you know, have run out fairly quickly after it's happened. Yeah. And Ex exactly. Like, and the, and the Vive mm -hmm. is like, what, $600? Right. <laughs> and you need and this how is 40. much? Like, what is the cost of the PC that will run that? Right, yeah. And then also, for software on top of that, yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of people were mentioning that Oculus, uh, what's it called? Oculus Go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's an all-in-one headset that's only $200. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's not too bad. 
because you know you have to buy the switch also right but that's true, true. but you, you buy also have to buy your phone if we're like looking at it it's, like that you know mm -hmm. like well the phone like google cardboard and stuff that's for google cardboard that's what i, I was comparing this thing to google, mm -hmm. google cardboard because that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. i think google cardboard was free at one point because mm. i i have google cardboard i don't know where the hell it is <laughs> i was gonna pull it out for the video but i was like i'm not going to find that i didn't know um, that it was free, like because i know they have like schematics online where it's like you could download this and cut it out yourself you know like that mm. sort of situation I think, I think will got it from like some google promotion uh -huh. But yeah, we it, it was it's it's cool, but like it wasn't as cool. It's not as cool as Labo. Like the free stuff that it comes with, it comes with like one video of like you like going through the ocean in like 360 mm -hmm. and like some other stuff. I mean, you can watch YouTube in 360 with it, but you can also do that with Labo mm -hmm. now too. I mean, that's the thing that's tricky I think with a lot of the VR stuff really is just the software where like getting yeah. the you know Google Cardboard or something for your phone like that like I, I mean I've told AJ on here before like my wife got me a VR headset um, that for your phone that was a, a nice one like two ish years ago for Christmas and but really my problem was like I, I wanted to want to use it but there just wasn't any software that I could find very accessibly that was like you know, and I, I didn't really want to pay for software that I didn't think was going to be good anyway. So I kind of was just stuck where it's like, all right, well, I've got this thing, but don't even know what to use it with. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing Nintendo has nailed down yeah, right. is the software. Like the, the games are good. Exactly. And they're, fun. Yeah. They're, they're short. And there's not a lot of depth, but like it, it, it definitely gives you that wow factor. And I'd say like some of them are, you know, like I would say like the the the, the gun one probably has like the most build ratio like it's the most out of balance for the time commitment for building it versus the time you get mm, out of yeah. it because like the game is like you, what i mean i guess you can go for higher scores or whatever but playing through it is like two hours maybe like doing everything in that versus probably, the other ones well, probably way less than two hours well yeah like yeah, that. somewhere around there. Um, but the other ones, I feel like you get more like more time out of it because they have multiple things, and those things are like like the um, the elephant has like this Pictionary mode where it's like you build this 3D model thing, and then everybody in a room guesses what that is. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like that has more uh, legs than the blaster, especially with how you like describe the hungry hungry hippo situation. The only thing I, with I, that I, game compared like the hungry hungry hippo one time ratio wise, I feel like just makes sense as far as like you've got it on your face, you try it for a little while, other dude gets it on his face, he tries it for I'm gonna stop that sentence. Um and <laughs> then, uh compared to the elephant, you know, like the game that you were just describing, I feel yeah. like the drawing it ratio to like you've got Labo and using it for like 20 minutes drawing a thing or I don't know, like right, 10 right, minutes. Right. And then everybody else gets like three seconds to look at it and be like, I don't know, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it seems a little off balanced, but whatever. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe not, haven't used it. So surely I don't know. <laughs> I, I think you get the most out of just the core VR headset, mm, which yeah. is the easiest thing to build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if, if you're worried, about, if, if somebody's worried about like, I don't want to build all this stuff, just get the core head, just get the, base kit mm -hmm. and just the headset takes like you can build in like a half an hour yeah so uh would would you say it's worth getting the big kit at all i think the small kit is fine and that's the 40 dollar one that's think, fine for almost everybody i think that like if you want more of like those gameplay experiences that we were talking about versus just like looking at it and being like oh this is neat uh, mm -hmm. But if you if you look at that and you're like, oh, this is really cool. I want to do more of this, but with different things, then I think it's worth it because there there is some cool stuff. Like I would say that besides the blaster, just like like conceptually, like I like the idea of that. I like what's there, but there isn't a lot there for mm -hmm. that. Uh, I also liked like the bird. Like that was a fun mini game, especially like when you put the fan into the equation because then it's like it is like it kind of tricks your brain where it's like oh okay i'm going faster so there's wind <laughs> coming at me you know mm -hmm. it's like there's cool little things like that um i would probably say that the elephant one is my least favorite but a lot of that is just because out of all of those things it feels like it's the most flimsy thing like mm. i always feel like i'm going to break it or not like it's not going to work right with how the yeah, rubber bands it, are it, it's, like it looks weird mm -hmm. and, and the hinges look a lot tinier even the blaster the blaster like the ha the handle 
sometimes I feel like I'm gonna cock it too hard and stuff, you know. Yeah. Don't laugh, Parker. Is, <laughs> you know, what did I say? I, uh, what was the word that I said that made you laugh? Huh? Uh, <laughs> he was laughing at the idea of you breaking. <laughs> the, nothing, listen, okay, man, here's PG the thing. I tried to pick out a word. PG. I tried to pick out a word after that in that sentence. I was like, hard. No, that's also it. No, nope, that's also <laughs> something. <laughs> it's like, nah, I don't know. I just gave up. <laughs> No, we're here to laugh. <laughs> you know, guys, we're here to, we're laugh. to laugh and learn and love that, each other. So true. That too. That too. Um, and you know what? You know what I love? I love Bob, and he made a video. And we're oh, going to look at the. We're going to look at the comments. You don't, Do I not, Bob? Do you, you have any proof of that? Yes. Show me the receipts right now. We're not talking about your video anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I don't know, because you know Bob, he's like this YouTube big shot. He probably doesn't read his comments. I read my comments. <laughs> Plus he's 30. But only when probably, the video is first up. Plus he's 30. He probably can't even it the, see it, you know? I read it when the when the video first comes up, like when I wake up at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then uh, I don't read them after that. You hear that? You hear that, people? Comment fast. So I'm you, the, I mean, that's the that's your comment. Away. Just comment really early, right? After the yeah. first day, like I read comments the first day and then the day that we record the podcast. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't read them after the first day because then it's not my subscribers anymore. It's that's uh, true. Yeah, it's everyone else. True. So. I don't, then it's just vitriol. I, on the other hand, I've actually been catching up on all comments on YouTube. Uh, I'm still in 2006. There's a lot of comments to go through, <laughs> but uh, making some good progress. So. Was, how'd you get through 2005 that fast? <laughs> I've been working on it for there wasn't years. A lot, there wasn't a lot of volume in 2005. That's, I wonder when it'll start get, to get vitriolic. Oof. That's fair. Good point. But we have some good comments uh -huh. here. And this it's Parker's it. job. This is my that. job. <laughs> I am ready. All right, so some comments. I uh, I read these out. You guys talk about them, and then I'll also talk when the things happen. Screwless H says, "Does this change my opinion on Labo?" Kinda actually. Eighty dollars for what was tech demos and gimmicks that get old after eight hours isn't that appealing. But forty dollars for a cheap VR experience, enough mini games to be called a collection, and the ability to create or the ability of create your own cheap VR experience. Okay, now we're talking. I, I, sh I should know that the video's title is uh, something like uh, Nintendo Labo f for the Switch is worth every penny. Mm -hmm. So that already got people like, what? <laughs> is it worth my penny? I'll be the judge of that. $40 for cardboard, $80 because, so, you know, they automatically... 4,000 pennies. They... It, it, it is a little like the marketing kind of sucks because uh, there's the $40 kit and the $80 kit and they make it seem like mm. the $80 kit is what you should get. Right. You know? Are the expansions available yet? Everybody always says that you can buy the cardboard by themselves. Yeah, you can. But in the last, la the first Labo that came out, everybody also said that, but that was only available in Japan for mm. a really long time. Right. Interesting. Um, you could also just download the schematics, yeah. which are also Japanese, and uh, make your own cardboard if you want. You can cut your own cardboard, so you don't actually have to buy them. But people are also saying that the car, the 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 Toy Con kits individually are twenty dollars each. Yeah, and that's what I was asking about. Like, I don't know if those are available yet. So it's kind of like they're kind of banking on you to like sit with the cheap one and say like, oh yeah, I like that. Sure, why not? I'll buy that thing yeah. when that comes out. I'm looking. But, uh, yeah. hmm. and, and also, you can. Uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, you you don't. You get all of the software with both kits. So even right. though you don't have all of the toy con to uh, play with, like I don't get. I didn't get the bird thing. I didn't get the elephant thing. But I could download the schematics and cut my own cardboard if I really wanted to, and still play those games on my kit. Or I could just hold the Joy Con in a weird way and try to play the game as hard as I can. Does the, the the only thing about that that I don't know, like you, you probably wouldn't be able to get everything that way because I don't think like their screws are like something that you can just go and buy. Oh, no. So like mm -hmm. you would have to get some level of like support from Nintendo for that. Well, you got to be crafty, man. Fair. You know, you could you could go, to, go to Ikea. All of the little <laughs> screws are free if you go to a little customer service desk. Just use legit <laughs> screws. Yeah, you're good, man. 
I'm looking it up, by the way, and I don't see right now the ability to buy. I mean, because I know that they marketed it as you can buy the other two sets for $20 each. But like I'm trying to find like on Amazon, it's got the $40 set and the $80 set, but it doesn't show the additional sets separately. That's what I mean right now. Yeah, everybody's super weird. Everybody's saying you can get them, but you can't really. Yeah. Uh, Let me see the official word from my best pals over at Nintendo (laughs) on the PR kit. You know what I'm saying, Bob? Like I said, when the first thing (laughs) came out, it was only Japanese. Yeah. Well, actually, you you still couldn't buy it. You can download the schematics, but they were from the Japanese site. Right. But and, I think, aren't you talking you about... Could, they said you could buy them, right. but it, that was way later. Aren't you talking about the the expansion? Is that what you're saying, Parker? Not the not the replacement parts. Right. Or like yeah. the, the, he's talking about the like the VR kit okay, expansion. So the exp- the- I'm talking about like the elephant. Like I can't... Right. Like I, People are saying I can pay twenty dollars to buy the elephant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like you said, Bob, I just looked it up on Amazon Japan, and sure enough, it is available on Amazon Japan to buy like the elephant and the oh. and the camera or the bird and the uh, wind pedal thing. But they're not on Amazon US. So interesting. Interesting. I thought it was going to be straight from uh, Nintendo or something. I'm trying to see um, if they have the release. I think date that they're in, in English though. So like, mm. if you buy it from Japan, it'll like that makes sense because th- th- there's no like. It just says Labo on it. Like, there's no, like... Yeah, right. It, it, it doesn't matter what language is on the cardboard, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Also, you already have the instructions. Yeah, right. Yes, the instructions will be in English because mm-hmm. they're on your Switch. I mean, yeah, so this, this whole bit of it's weird. I definitely think that them doing the $40, you know, entry kit v- version is a lot better than doing just the $80 one because that's just kind of oppressive of a price for something that you think you're probably going to spend a little bit of time on and then not use ever again. But it is weird that they're not, that they don't have these available in the U.S. for the expansion bits. So, that's yeah, odd. Yeah, super but. weird. And it's super weird that everybody thinks that they are available. Right. Well, because all the marketing stuff, I mean, it's one of those things that probably everybody paid attention, to, I mean, myself included, paid attention to the marketing, but didn't bother to look into it from, like, you know, my own self. I wasn't trying to go and buy the expansion kit. So, that said, I guess nobody knows because they just haven't run into the situation yet, but probably somewhat soon we'll start to see more people running into this. Uh, okay, now I'm going to go good. through my comments and tell everybody, <laughs> okay, go buy one. Go buy so it, I have the, um, they, they sent with this like card stock that's like, this is the promotional stuff and what you can buy and how much it costs. Um, and they do have it. It's mm-hmm. available. The, the expansions you can only get through Nintendo. So Nintendo.com oh. okay. is how you get the, um, so that's what Bob was saying. Yeah. Two sets. Interesting. How do you? Doesn't matter. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you got, I guess they send it to you. I guess. Well, cool. So. Uh, yeah, that's super odd. But uh, moving along. In any case, some other comments from you guys. Ninja Chris Seven Seven says, "I can see them adding Virtual Boy games to the online service now. Of course, with VR support. How awesome would that be?" So many people commented this. <laughs> they do I have don't like understand. A, they have like an Easter egg where it's like, "Hey, remember Virtual Boy? Remember we did this." What? There, there's like an Easter egg in Labo where you can like look at like, oh, this is what Virtual Boy looks like. It's like a, a video really? of it playing, but you're not actually playing it, correct? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's in the, yeah, it's somewhere. I mean, I haven't played it, obviously. but I, I think it's in the VR videos. Yes, there's like a right. section where it's like, these are videos that you can watch in 3D on your VR headset. Oh, I, did, I didn't even check that out. Mm-hmm. The likelihood of them actually doing anything with those games, though, like I think, I think it wasn't just the hardware that you know yeah, messed with kids at the time, but it was also the quality of the games being like that probably wasn't great on eyesight. So I don't know if they want to pair those two things together, but I mean, yeah, there's not there's not a chance, and I don't understand why anybody would even want it. I think- Name one game on the Virtual Boy. They got. They have that one uh, Mario Tennis one. Yep, and they, Wario they yes. Wario Land. Didn't that like start on the Virtual Boy, or am I wrong? No, it uh, started on the it Game started Boy. on Game Boy. Okay, I. Oh, it was Mario Tennis started on the on the Virtual Boy, right? That was before the N sixty four. Yeah, that that sounds right. Okay, yeah. interesting. That's strange. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then those are literally the only two games that I even know were on there. So yeah, nobody, nobody wants. Them. No, I think it's for if nothing else, then just, I, it would have been nice for them to add one game 
just with the software of just you know a piece of history kind of thing other than just in that video it's also not vr virtual boy it's it's stationary Mm, yeah you know so like you're not well i guess breath of the wild is going to be similar to that too yeah Hmm. it's it is kind of weird because it's like nintendo talks about it like this is our first time trying this because it is but everybody else is like their second foray into it's like (laughs) but it's not though yeah it's super Mm -hmm. not (laughs) yep and our second foray into the comments, which is really not because it's the third one, is Gomer J says they need to find a way to share user creations. It could be an amazing experience with that function. I suppose people can post their schematics, quote unquote, from the builder online, but then you have to recreate them, which takes time, especially f- for some of the better things people would come up with, I assume. Yeah, like that's something that like really confused me that that's not online in any way. Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like I like incited the riot by saying that. <laughs> I feel like I got uh, people were like, oh, yeah, yeah. Why isn't this online? I, I was thinking about that no, when yeah, they first same. announced that because everybody was saying like, oh, hey, look, they basically just threw dreams into their game. But dreams, you can download games that mm-hmm. other people play. I mean, especially because right. they're doing it with Super Mario Maker and then now with uh, Smash World and the, you know, stage builder type stuff. Like, yeah. that's obviously a feature that they want to be able to promote. But then, I mean, again, we kind of talked about this last week or something, but I understand why they wouldn't for one reason or another. But, like, they, they're they cracking down hard on reporting stages on Smash stage builder. So, like, I don't see why they couldn't just do the same thing, you know? If, yeah. if that's their only reason because you know they the don't thing, the I thing don't that i think they might be assuming is like this you know this is mainly for kids kids are dumb right. they don't know how to download stuff <laughs> yeah well and and it's because of the moderation because with with any any sort of user generated content you need it to be moderated mm-hmm. right um so they probably just don't want to have to deal with that but they, and also they're just really bad at online so yeah, I mean, I think your point with the moderation too is good. Where it's, I mean, it's that's just not where they have their labo budget. It seems like yeah. you know they pretty much most of the stuff is one and done. And then I wonder, you know, for the inclusion of labo uh, like vehicle kit in uh, Mario Kart, was that the labo team that worked on that primarily, or was that the Mario Kart team that worked on that, or like you know how how who who's doing the upkeep because i think for a lot of it they're kind of just doing it getting it out the door and then moving on to the next one it seems like i'm I mean, pretty EPD's, sure they allocate a low budget to labo yeah epd is weird in that way where they just like take certain people from certain teams and they're like all right you're on this game you know like the mm-hmm. director for this game was like the director or a producer for splatoon weird so it's like oh. it's that sort of thing where they just throw people all over the place yep which makes yeah, it doesn't matter. Weird. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, like, uh, I, I know that the f- first Labo kits didn't sell very well, but also they didn't make many of them, mm-hmm. so they didn't expect it to sell very well. Right. This one sold out everywhere, but I think that's because they didn't make a lot of them because they didn't expect it to sell very well. Yeah, so, I, it's, it's it probably hard. didn't. Ex- they probably didn't throw a lot of money into it. Right. It's hard, like trying to figure out what their expectations mm-hmm. were. I mm-hmm. think, yeah, I think they kind of. It was one of those things where they they publicly expected low, but secretly expected high. I, I, this is complete speculation and just based off little things that I've heard from public things that were said. But um, where I think part of the reason why m- the middle of last year was kind of barren was possibly well it wasn't there were a lot of good ports and stuff like that but just as far as like first party things i'd heard somebody say that they were pretty sure that it was that nintendo was hoping labo to take off more and so that that would really fill out some more of 2018 kind of in the middle there Yeah, i don't i don't know i don't know if that's yeah (laughs) that that doesn't really add up to me because i think a big reason why labo didn't take off and why my like labo vr specifically seems to be doing better Mm -hmm. is just because like people more so in like our part of the demographic where Mm -hmm. it's like you know the people that get excited for smash brothers and mario and pokemon and stuff like that like they were kind of down on it yeah so it kind of that stuff bleeds through into the kids yep where like a, a lot of stuff with wii u was like older people were down on that and their marketing was to the kids and that i mean mm-hmm. really doesn't seem to be the most effective way to market to kids like mm-hmm. the best way to market to kids is to market to the people older than them because then they see it and they're like oh that's cool i want to play call of duty <laughs> you know yeah yeah and i think 
no yeah exactly the the thing the problem with it is that they it's kind of like the kirby situation that we've talked about before where you know they're aiming towards a specific demographic of kids or whatever and then not trying to bridge the gap where i think if they'd included if they include a little bit more stuff in the vr or in the labo in general that applies to wider ranges of people and there's some more stuff that our age range can get out of it then that's going to only help all the other age ranges care about it more as well. Because I think just focusing on kids, like it wouldn't be too hard to just include more stuff where it would broaden it out some more. Maybe it would be. I don't know. I don't develop games, but <laughs> that was just some vague thoughts. Some other vague thoughts that are a little more specific because their comment is ZWhippy92 says Labo VR is definitely interesting to me. I want to buy a PlayStation VR because there are a lot of games that look really fun, but at the same time, I've never tried VR and don't want to spend $350 on something I'm not 100% sure about. We'll probably buy the starter kit at least just to try it out. Maybe it looks good on a shelf somewhere in my apartment when I'm not using it. That's yeah, something I'm, that I thought about too. Where it's like, I could always put it on the set somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know people aren't going to get a lot of use out of this. Yeah. But it's only $40. And I'm glad a lot of people are. I'm glad they made it that cheap for the essentials kit. And I'm glad that a lot of people are seeing that and are like, oh, I'll just get that. You know? Yeah. Instead mm-hmm. of spending the $80. Because Labo, I mean, the original Labo kits were all expensive too. I think they were also eighty dollars, right? There was one that was eighty dollars, and then there was one that was like seventy. I want to so. say they, they the were robot more than was eighty, and the variety kit was seventy. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. But and everybody was like, "Oh, eighty dollars for cardboard." Mm-hmm. Yeah, which uh, like that whole thing. Like I don't know. I'm weird with pricing games anyway. Like <laughs> even before all of this, because I would spend sixty dollars on a game I'm only going to play for four hours and be fine with it. You mm-hmm. know. Well, um, well. Hmm. I had a friend who said that, oh, it's $40, it's all cardboard. And then I'm like, oh, yeah? And then I take the game out and show them the game. Here's the game. <laughs> and that shuts people up because it's an actual game in an actual case. And those things are usually $60, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Bob's yep. video. And uh, there was a, a post credit scene <laughs> <laughs> where Bob got left out of my video. Uh, yes. So I did a video and people commented on that, and it was also about Labo. So no need to like you know go over like Labo's a thing that exists and stuff. Let's also, talk about Labo again. <laughs> <laughs> but something that we we said a lot where it's like you know the software is a big part of this, and I'm I was thinking the same thing that a lot of people are was like this the software that's here kind of is like one and done, and then you're done with it. But if they wanted to have legs, they could if they just implemented it in other games. I was like, what are other games that could naturally fit? And mm-hmm. that's what my video was about. And I asked people some questions and they responded to them in the comments. They sure did. Yeah. So those questions that you asked, AJ, were uh, the first one was what Nintendo franchises would you like to experience in VR? Uh, and then what would you like Game Freak to make using Labo VR? Next up, what your favorite Labo toy con is so far, and would you play a Pikmin VR game? So, Omnim, in answer to those questions. You gave everybody a lot of homework. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking questions. Yeah. I told them they can answer anyone that they wanted to. Most people that answered them answered all of them. <laughs> <laughs> good job, people. You're doing, you're doing good work. Achievers over here. Yeah. Omnim says, for the first question, which was what Nintendo franchises would you like to experience in VR, says Pokemon and some shooters like Wolfenstein. And then, AJ, do you want to read? Do you want me to read all of these, and then we'll go through them, or just do them you one just at a time? Read all of them. Cool. <laughs> Here we go. Omnim keeps going by answering the second question. Of course, flying slash diving and such stuff would get even better. Even a short game. This is for what Game Freak would make in Lab of VR. Even a short game like Snap in the now called Go Park would make or would be better than only having a large map missing because of changings. Every everybody wants freaking. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon, Pokemon Snap. snap. Yeah. I like, I was like, when I was looking through this stuff, because I was talking to Dan and I was like, these are the games that I'm thinking about. And he's like, Pokemon Snap. And I'm like, eh, you know, because like, everybody's <laughs> saying that. Like, People have this weird, like, n- like their nostalgia is misplaced for that yeah. game. I, I think that's how it is, which, I mean, we're notorious for this whole thing. It's like with the N64 in general. 
Yeah. Um, so it's like like Star Fox. Like I just want Star Fox the way it is. It's like no, you don't. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't pay sixty dollars for an on rail shooter. You would not do that. It's not happening. I think a lot Nobody's of it doing is that in twenty nineteen. It's like that situation when you're when you're a kid at a playground and you're like, wow, this is the biggest pay- playground ever. And then you come back, you know, when you're thirty years old and you're like, like Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I hate everything. <laughs> so you come back, you know, when you're really, really, really old. Um, like, <laughs> and and you're like, man, this playground is tiny and not that impressive anymore. I think there's some things like that, too, where or if there's gradual changes like Pokemon in general, you know, is was a very small game on the Game Boy in the sense of like scope or whatever. I mean, it was a big world, but, you know, it's if you take it, it's just screens and screens and all that kind of stuff. But then. Yeah. If you gave somebody um, Pokemon Sun and Moon, like right after Pokemon uh, Red and Blue, it would have felt like this is what I've always wanted. Like, this is a huge thing, you know, because it's like there's more going on in Pokemon Sun and Moon than there was in Pokemon Stadium, which was a home console game. But still, at this point, now that our expectations of home console games change, if we gave us today the home console game that we would have wanted back on the N64 generation, it still just wouldn't feel like the same thing. Yeah, and, and Pokemon Snap reminds me a lot of like those like Disney rides. Mm-hmm. Yes, yep. Where it's like, okay, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same thing over and over again. I'll throw the Pokeball here this time. Okay, yeah, I got something different. You know, it's yep. like yeah, and it's, that's that's something I talked about in this regarding Nintendo VR. Period. Like that's what it feels like to me is those like attractions where it's like mm-hmm. Frick 4D, that whole situation. Yeah. But it's just at your house. <laughs> a lot of people think that VR is going to be a location thing now because nobody can afford a VR setup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think and that I, makes a I lot of sense. That, like I I think it's less about being able to afford the setup because they do have the cheaper things and stuff like that. Nobody can afford the applications that sound cool now. Mm, you know yeah. where it's like a lot of the stuff is games and those games are small and all other stuff but the stuff that's really cool are those like 40 things where it's like oh i shot that guy and i felt like liquid <laughs> or air <laughs> shoot like going towards me or whatever you know um that you can't do at your house mm-hmm. um so you got to go to like a universal studios to do stuff like that um but like I guess once they start going outside of that and VR becomes like you set up the 360 camera in your grandma's house and you talk there and you show her the dog and how your kid grew three inches in the last two months or whatever. And like, hey, look at the kid. You know, like that sort of thing is like where VR could uh, proliferate (laughs) versus uh, like video games. Like like gamers think like, oh yeah, this is the next big thing for gaming. But like if VR is going to take off, it's going to be because of everything else. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Omnim's next comment, just moving along here, was uh, as far as what's his favorite Labo ToyCon VR was shooter and VR despite not having any Labo yet. We got good news for you. You can <laughs> jump in for forty dollars. Get your favorite setup. Just four thousand pennies, of which it is worth every one. Uh, and then, would you play a Pikmin VR game? Not. And he says, not a fan of childish Pikmin, but I would love a game using these great innovations instead of being wasted over some time. I'm not sure I fully understand. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of thrown off by that because it's like he's like childish Pikmin, but also like he seems like a pretty big Pokemon fan. So I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, that's some misplaced like shade being thrown there. Yeah, I don't cool. like Pikmin. Yeah, I, I like, you know calling yeah. childish. Jeez, man, what are you doing over here? Pikmin die in the line of duty, sir. <laughs> There's that clip uh, from from Brawl where uh, Captain Falcon just kills like 10 Pikmin. Yeah. And then Olimar is like, oh, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, he does it all the time. Like in Pikmin 3, if you don't get all, because like you like allocate your Pikmin to do different things. And you're like, hey, go mm-hmm. over there. If you don't solve like a path to get them back to you, mm-hmm. the ending cutscene of the end of the day is just them all getting eaten. Yep. <laughs> Same thing in at least one. I haven't played two, but yeah, 100%. That's the same situation. And if, if you do get them, it's like all the, you know, monster thingies, whatever they are, walking around being like, where's all the Pikmin that I can eat? So, like, yeah. they're definitely, they're primed and ready to be eating some Pikmin. It's messed up, man. It's it is. It's dark. Poor Pikmin. 
Uh, and then Omnium finishes up by saying, I want that, or I assume this is part of that comment. Um, yeah, I want is. that Nintendo zipper Dan wears. Where to get? Greetings from Germany and normally Bob v- Wolf viewer. Oh, well, hey, man. Let's go. It's, uh, no hey. wonder why he said that about Pikmin. <laughs> it's you. <Yeah. laughs> Your dark influence. <laughs> Why get Dan's hoodie when you can get my <laughs> Nintendo hoodie over at WolfDanApparel.com? Your what hoodie? I don't think you're allowed to say that. My <laughs> NES Your nondescript video game hoodie. <laughs> my, my hoodie with circles <laughs> that are red on it. Mm. Mm-mm. Indeed. Uh, next comment, real quick. We've got Super Dude Lebowski. What's up, Super Dude Lebowski? Um, so for the first one, g- franchise you'd like to see is Red Steel Two specifically. An awesome underrated Wii exclusive first person and blend of motion sword fighting and Western gunplay. Uh, uh, I have friends who were super into Red Steel when it came out, and I don't know why. I, think I played had, a little we bit. Had Halo, Call of Duty, and all this stuff, and they were like all about Red Steel. Yeah, I, wonder, I, I didn't like it that much. There was like strong, uh, not strong rumors, but there were rumors like at some point last year or two years ago or something that Ubisoft, because that's a Ubisoft game, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, I think um, so. That they were bringing that back. But then we just found out today or yesterday or something that 13 is coming back. And that's also. I don't even know what that is. I Also, I just want to be clear. There is a Red Steel 2. <laughs> yes. So this would be three. Indeed. Sorry. Yeah, that's what yes. he was saying. He's saying like Red Steel Two specifically. Oh, he is said, an I awesome. thought he wanted like a Red Steel Two. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Never mind. Indeed. I heard two wasn't good. I heard uh, the first one. Only played a little bit of the first one. I can't say that I would know. It existed. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, and then as far as something else that exists, he's good. The rest. I'm not going to segue in the same comment. It's too much work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he wants Game Freak to make, he says, curious to see what they're doing with that upcoming RPG they've been rather quiet about, which town, town. I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, which I don't know how that would factor in a lab of VR specifically, but it would be neat if they implemented some things. I'm also curious I'm about su- that game. I'm surprised they haven't said anything about same. that. They said 2019. I do wonder if some of these 2019 games get delayed out to 2020. Cause yeah, because like it's gonna, that can't be a holiday game. They can't put that beside yeah, Pokemon. No, <laughs> that would be that would not be uh, smart. And it sounds like they're. I mean, feels like they're kind of running out of time for it to be a summer game or whatever. I don't know. Just it seems like it must be further out, but. Just curious on all that. Um, and then uh, favorite Labo toy con. Use none, but the elephant looks like it could do plenty. Mario 3D World Maker, please. And for the Pikmin VR game, he says, never played a Pikmin, but it would be, but if it were at all like your guys, well, Dan's ideas, well, absolutely would be real fun. Yeah, I didn't know Dan liked Pikmin, but P- he was the one that was like, hey, we should put this in there. I'm like, sure, well, fine, why not? <laughs> but you're talking about it, because I only played Pikmin 3, and I don't want to get Pikmin fans mad. Logan got Pikmin fans mad. Um, he made a video. With the Where's Pikmin 4 video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He mm-hmm. said a lot of stuff that Pikmin fans don't like. They're like, it's not the gray Pikmin, it's the rock Pikmin. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's That's not a- gray. Yeah, Man. exactly. Man. I need to I need to take a day and actually play Pikmin because I talk a lot of crap about Pikmin. And play I, Pikmin three. Um, yeah. That's the one I played and it mm-hmm. was neat. Yeah, I I've only played Pikmin one. It was fun just ex- outside of the it's it's got like you need to finish the game within thirty in game in day in game days. days. Yeah, and it's just a little stressful. Like I I mean I did. That's how, it was I mean, fine. That's how Pikmin three is too. Okay, gotcha. Well, then, Do you got to get on. juice in Pikmin 1? Uh, nope, no juice. You got to get enough food to feed your people oh. for th- however many days. And you can get multiple days worth of food on like each day if you're good enough. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think I had to do any of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of. I mean, or do you mean to just like to grow them or like bloom them or whatever? Or uh, like it, if no, you don't feed them, I they mean, die? I mean specifically to feed like Olimar, well Olimar, oh, gotcha. not him, Charlie and, and Brittany Alf or whatever. And Brittany, mm-hmm. yeah, them. Man, <laughs> crazy times. Um, Falcon, F-Zero Kid, says, personally, I think Nintendo should make a new IP specifically designed around VR. That way it's not something that feels shoehorned in for the sake of it. Also, I'd like Game Freak to make the game they want to make, like a passion project of sorts, something that shows the passion expressed by the dev team. The, that way, we know we're getting their very best. 
Uh, favorite toy con so far? None. I don't care about Labo. And would I play Pikmin VR? Double no. I have negative 78 interest in VR, and I didn't even care for regular Pikmin games. Why did he watch the video? Because <laughs> he li- he likes, he's always there. He, Falcon is always there. He's the first one to comment all the time. Um, hey, you know, we appreciate that. Mm-hmm. This is true. These are facts. Um, but in regards to like the first comment, like, I don't know how you could, like, if it's a 3D game, I don't understand the idea of like VR being shoehorned in. Hmm. Like, because it's not really like a, it's not a right. new element per se. You're already in 3D. <laughs> It's well, not like saying like, oh, we got to figure out how to make the gamepad make sense, right? Like, it's just substituting you moving the right analog stick to move the camera with your head. Yeah. I'm well, trying to well, think. Well, what yeah. are, they talk, are they talking about a specific game? He's just saying like he would prefer for Nintendo to make a VR, like a game that is meant for VR. And that's what that game I is th- about. I think you have to develop for VR with VR right. in mind because... Uh, like you said, uh, you have a new axis to play with. You have a new input method uh, to pl- to move the camera around. You right. are the camera. So, so you had to... Right. Like, let, let me explain better what I'm saying. Like, you have to, like, develop the experience itself around that. With the IP, I don't understand why that needs to be specific. Right. You know? Um, well, is there an IP that wouldn't work? That's what I'm trying exactly. to think of. Like, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, a, obviously, like a 2D game or whatever, but that's kind of like, well, duh. I mean, well, I mean, you could see it from an outside perspective, like the uh, thumbnail that you made for Logan's video, where it's you know you Mario walking in the 2D plane and you're looking at the 2D plane essentially in front of you. Like, yes, that would be dumb. But besides that, like I could even see 2D Mario, but it's you know you just see the depth in it, um, kind yeah. of more like in the sense of 3d world or that kind of a thing but so you're yeah. just watching from an outside perspective so like i feel like most games you could either kind of just give a depth effect or otherwise put you in the player's seat you know or the the character's perspective and it could work yeah you know? like it's not like a donkey kong country tropical freeze situation where it's like what do we do with the game pet and eh, just turn donkey it off. Kong, <laughs> donkey kong wouldn't work that's the only game i think that would work i think donkey kong would work because well the modern ones because mm-hmm. they use depth a lot where you shoot through the cannon and you're on the mm-hmm. like the further plane out yeah but they're all 2d they're they're 2d but you're still on a different plane so like you you're further away from the foreground yeah, so i think that's not enough yeah no i mean i think it, yeah i it would be a little bit like superfluous but at yeah. the same time kind of you know maybe just a fun experience to just stick it in vr just so that you can like view the exact it's pretty much the same exact game experience except for you're just seeing it with the depth in there instead of the depth just being something that you can see because of you know uh items being smaller i I couldn't see them saying like this is donkey kong country vr it's Mm -hmm. just like it's it's just donkey kong country kind of like like a 3d movie i mean that kind of a thing where it's just like you're looking at it and you can just see it's because I feel like a lot of VR is kind of more like, you know, 3D experiences at Disney World in 1997 or something like that, where it's like, whoa, there's all this stuff like coming at my face or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yep. instead, so they clip that. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> We're just doing things. Um, as opposed to now, most 3D movies are more like an avatar situation where it's just, you know, it's in 3D. It just looks, you know, better, perhaps, or different or whatever, which that said, I don't really care about 3D movies. So, um, but I'd imagine yeah. it would be more of that kind of situation where it's, you know, you're not in a person's perspective for some of these games. You're just getting an extra, yeah, depth element or whatever. But is it really worth doing in that case? Depends on the amount of development time, I would think. So usually not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was everybody's thoughts on that. Yeah. But speaking of Donkey Kong Country and uh, within that, retro studios i don't know did you guys see this picture um retro studios sent uh you know parting gift to reggie which is great my best pal my best friend reggie (laughs) hey everybody (laughs) uh he doesn't follow me so we're in the same so so retro uh, reggie right like this happened in the last week yeah this was like, like I guess that's kind of news oh, too. Yeah. He has a Twitter. Yep. He has a Twitter now. <laughs> and we don't know what he's going to tweet 
so far on a broader like scale but right now he's just like hey i'm leaving nintendo here's all this stuff i'm leaving you should all cry every day <laughs> every day that i tweet a thing get sad and or jealous that my job gives me way more cooler parton gifts than you'll ever get yep but yeah one of you're those... gonna have to give your stapler back <laughs> <laughs> one of those parting gifts was this um was retro studios uh, the concept artist or somebody, an artist over there drew a, it's Reggie and Samus and a Metroid and uh, uh, some of the Donkey Kong cast in any case, it's Donkey Kong, Dixie Kong, and Diddy Kong, I think, maybe Cranky as well. Um, yeah. And there's a little Mario statue that's covering up most of a little, some, of something yeah. that we just see a little hand of. It's like a little robot hand and we don't know what it is. So I was watching uh, Kind of Funny Games or listening. What the hell is that all about? Kind of Funny Games Daily. Uh-huh. And Tim Geddes mm-hmm. said that he thinks that it's Rob from Star Fox. It so, looks, I mean, I was going to say the Star Fox guy's got them robot legs. That looks like a yeah. robot situation going on. But they don't have uh-huh. robot hands. Yeah, but which who has a robot hand? Rob? Yeah, he's okay. just a robot. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at I mean, yeah, why, why would some Rob of this does kind of fit in. That hand looks, that hand looks, yep, pretty similar from at least. Ah, uh, yeah. That's I'm at it too now. interesting. So it's just straight up, hey, we're making Grand Prix. And then uh, th- what, their concept artist or whatever, like one of the artists that work for them retweeted it and did yeah. a wink face. And then somebody replied to him and was like, is this that? And he's <laughs> like, it is. <laughs> What's interesting, too, with the Star Fox Grand Prix things is, at least from, like, just conversations that seem to be happening at, like, I don't know, the Spawncast or whatever, which, Bob, you're very familiar with them. Um, yes. I'm uh, not. I don't I get invited of. to that. <laughs> Good. You know, sometimes you should be left out of things. <laughs> uh, so, it sounds like, at least from what they were saying, that, like, there was a, a big upswell back in the day when the rumor first came out. There was, you know, the rumor came out and it was fairly prevalent in the back end and then pretty shortly after that it completely died off to where they suspect that it's you know it was nothing in the first place and was like a fake rumor or whatever or i guess the other flip side of that is that it really has been like they found the leak and they plugged it and then that's it but like the the plugged it meant somebody got fired yeah or died (laughs) (laughs) katana zero situation over here (laughs) but that's interesting, yeah, because I was just curious in general what that was, but pointing this out is, I mean, ties some stuff together, so um, if it's not that... Why would you put freaking Star Fox on it, though? That's a great question. <laughs> because the, same thing. the Star Fox Grand Prix thing. And yeah, maybe is, is Star, Star Fox not going to be in it? Maybe, maybe this he's, guy... Maybe is, he's not as important. Maybe he's the new up-and-comer. Maybe Star Fox is training him to be the racer on top, you know? <laughs> is... What does Rob do in the Star Fox games? He's just a robot goes, that's like, luck. hey, you're going it. here, you're doing this, go fly there and do the thing. Because he's, if he was like Alfred. also a mechanic or something like that, maybe he's yeah. down in the pits in Star Fox Grand Prix <laughs> fixing up everybody's <laughs> ship and making them go fast. He would probably be like the announcer or something. So I'm sure he has like a big role. Yeah. But still, it's called Star Fox, you know? Yeah. Right. Agreed. Maybe this is because, you know, like Donkey Kong's not like Donkey Kong, mm-hmm. you know, like the rare they were like, hey, nah, we're we're using a different thing. We're not doing that. Maybe this is Rob's son. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's God. like their character. And they want to be like, these are our characters, mm-hmm. you know, that's possible. Man, I'm very curious about this now, whether it's him or something else or at some point, I imagine within the next yeah, less than a year, I'd hope we'll see what the rest of that picture looks like. I assume in the next couple months, E3 is like yep. two months or something like that. Yeah. I mean, if they've been working on something for a while, like if they've got bandwidth to start working on Metroid Prime 4 now, it means that either they haven't been working on anything or they're pretty much done with what they've been working on. So, Or they just like working on a whole bunch of projects and canceling all of them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> entirely possible i mean all all the like you know industry insiders tm uh they talk about how like retro has the bandwidth to work on multiple things Mm -hmm. where are those things yep i would love to see some of them 
Uh, but something else we've been wanting to see for a while and finally did this week was all of a sudden we got what was essentially a Smash Direct but wasn't branded as a Smash Direct on like Wednesday or whatever or yep. maybe Tuesday that was like yo what's up um here we go Joker's gonna be out tomorrow uh, it was yeah, Tuesday yeah because yeah. yeah. then yeah, it came yeah, out on yeah, Wednesday Tuesday. right and Joker and 3.0 are out look at that yeah I was playing Smash Bros so like people were sending this to me also I was like watching Bob stream in the background and uh destroying uh, his viewers at Smash Bros <laughs> Good job, Bob. um Thanks, man. <laughs> Bob wasn't playing Smash Bros I was just playing Smash Bros apart from that uh so I was like not really paying attention and I was like I'm gonna watch this after after I'm done playing this game so I watched it and I was like cool I don't care about really any of this other than Joker being in the game and I really don't care much about Joker I just like want to understand how he plays so I can play against him more than anything because I never played Persona you know Mm -hmm. like I have no affinity for Joker I don't know anything about that character I still don't know if his gun is a gun or an airsoft gun it's a gun they said gun they they call it a gun gun. everybody's telling me it's an airsoft gun but then when I try to look up information about it it's I'm seeing replicas of the gun as airsoft guns, like no crap, there's gonna be replicas. They're, they're basically saying that he in the game, like in the game, he bought an airsoft gun, and like in the regular world, it's an airsoft gun. But when he's in like this like persona mm. world thing, yes, it's a gun. But as per the logic of Smash Brothers and the fact that he's literally using a persona in the game, mm-hmm. the, the assumption is that it works in whatever world Smash that Brothers is. it's a gun is. with bullets. Yeah, there are it's bullets just in the there. Gun. I want to know if there are bullets in there. <laughs> That's what I want to know. It's just gun. I need to play Persona 5 now. Am I even going to know? Am I even going to get to see him buy the freaking gun in Persona 5? Or do I need to play Persona 1? Maybe you could. I don't I think, even think he's in there. I think he's only in Persona Five, as far as the mainline series games. So Q2. should be able to skip. Yeah, because Q two brings together some other things or whatever. Um, it is maybe funny it's though, in the it, anime. In oh, there's I didn't even know there was anime. Yep, but it's only in Japanese. I debated watching it, and I was like, Nah, I'm not reading stuff. I've been <laughs> thinking <laughs> about it, but I I gotta just play the game. Yeah, which I'll which I'll never do. I well, mean, it's coming to Switch or rumors, yeah, theoretically. rumors say it. I mean, and that's next week that we'll theoretically find out about if, I mean, you know, Persona 5S, which we assume is the Switch version. We'll find out. Yeah. It, I did think it was funny, too, in all the stuff where they talked about um, where they talked about Joker. They specifically said, like, Joker from Persona 5 and not, yeah. you know, Persona Q2. So that ends lends extra credibility to all that as well. Right. So, yeah, interesting. But yeah, things keep lending more credibility to other things. Specifically, um, that there was oh, another. We're not even, even going to talk about the stage builder. Well, Good, of course we are. Sucks. But it sounded like we were done, so I started <laughs> moving on. <laughs> the stage builder is real dumb, and it feels like it breaks the game what? a little bit. The stage builder is real dumb, it's and it feels like awesome. it breaks the game a little bit. <laughs> the stage builder is awesome, but yeah, it does break the game a little bit, so you can't yeah. really do too much of it. I, there's no stages on there that I see, and I'm like, I want to play that. I look at the stage, I see the thumbnail, I'm like, ha, that's a funny goof. Not playing on it, though. You know? <laughs> like, that's all it, Like, I sent Bob the, the... Was it a video? It was a video or a GIF or something of the... There's a Mario stage called Spicy Meatball or some crap where he eats a meatball and he poops it out. The meatball like, is like a little blob of lava, and yeah. if you hit the meatball, you bounce into Mario's mouth, and then you come out his butt and die immediately. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. I mean, everybody loves meatballs. We need we need is more re- levels like that that are like <laughs> wacky and like mm-hmm. mess with the gameplay. You know, I saw one that was it was uh, just King of the Hill, pretty much. It was like <laughs> their you know front yard or whatever it is in front of their fence and they had four me fighters that were just straight up the guys from king of the hill and then there was another one that was um the the stage was seymour and um uh dude um uh chalmers and yes. eating steamed hams <laughs> that one i saw oh yeah did i they mention uh, hashtag <laughs> uh free product they sent me joker for free nice um had to say that but anyways, yeah, stage builder. I don't like it. 
<laughs> I like I like looking through the menus and mm-hmm. seeing like what people are making, and I'm like, ha, oh, that's funny. They made that me fighter. That's cool. Uh, but none of it makes me want to download it. And the one time I did, we were playing this on Bob's stream yesterday, um, or at the time of recording this on Thursday. <laughs> Um and like my the stage that I picked broke the the arena. Oh, fun! One stage, <laughs> like, one stage broke the arena. Yeah, that's dumb. It, 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 there was like an insane amount of lag. On that yeah. one stage. No, but I mean, like I picked the Mario three stage, and even after I got kicked, like the oh, game, yeah. my game crashed. And I, n- I never picked that stage again. I got back in the game, picked a, like, I didn't even pick a custom stage. I picked uh, the Joker stage, Mementos or whatever. I picked that, and then we started a match, and it still went to the custom stage that, kicked, yeah, that it, crashed my game. It, it, it was, like, pretty much locked on his, that one custom stage over and over and over again. So, yeah. custom stages are broken, but that doesn't mean custom stages are bad. It's yes, they it need does. to fix them. That's they like, need no, to no, fix no. them. This sounds like this sounds like a Sonic 06 conversation. <laughs> where it's like Sonic 06 is a broken no, game, but that doesn't mean it's game. bad. Sonic 06 is a bad game. The, you <laughs> said you said custom stages are dumb. They're not dumb. They just they just got some problems right they now. They are 100% dumb. I think the they're thing is definitely like definitely dumb. <laughs> I mean, the it's kind of a question of intended audience again. You know, like they're they are dumb, but like a fun kind of dumb, maybe. You yeah, know, that's what so I mean. Like, sure. That's what I mean. They're dumb in the sense that like nobody's going to see this stage and be like, oh, yeah, I want to play on that. It's just like, oh, yeah, this is a stupid goof. Well, and we'll well, laugh you haven't at it a looked few times. enough at uh, th- there hasn't been enough of the of the wacky ones with like uh, mm-hmm. the lava all over the edges or, yeah. like, or like, you right. know, like a like a bouncer in the middle that like knocks everybody around. Like mm-hmm. we need stuff that actually changes the gameplay. A lot of the stuff that we played on was just friggin' uh, uh, Final Destination with mm-hmm. like some stuff happening in the background. <laughs> from from what I'm seeing, it's pretty much the same as what Brawl and Smash Four had, but with more options. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that either devolves into like this is a stage where we're just going to rack up 999 percent from one hit because one person taps somebody else and then you bounce all over the state. Like uh, there was another stream that uh, Bob's friend did, um, Twitch TV slash. LP soldier or something. What is it? LP soldier. I should know this. <laughs> Go on Bob's. Uh, 0303, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yes, that um, is it. So yeah, and one of his viewers made this stage and it was basically just two circles and a platform. The circles were all lava and the platform is where you spawn. Oh and then goodness. once you knock into the, the side of the circle, you're just trapped there. For, for forever until you glitch outside of the circle and die. Yeah, Fine. that's what so I'm talking like, about. We need more levels like that. <laughs> it just like it changes the gameplay from something strategic to something terrible. There yeah, you go. yeah. <laughs> it, it, it changes the gameplay from something that you play into something that you just watch your character bounce all over the stage for 20 minutes at a time. The, I mean, there, there what are you is, complaining about? I don't get it. There is <laughs> art. There is art in Mario eating a meatball and then farting mm. you out. Hey, this is true, and I don't contest that, but playing on that stage is dumb. Watching it, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I think it's one of those things where, I mean, it's like it's like probably Mario Maker. It took a little while to, because at first you have some like pretty basic stuff, and then right. a couple cool things, and a lot of just trash levels, and then more and more, there's just legitimately awesome levels that come out of it. So I feel like eventually the people that are just trolling on it will die off a little bit, and some people will be left around making some decently cool stuff. But you know what? I got my fingers crossed. But I, uh I thought about this actually when we were talking about the Labo stuff, but I forgot to mention it. The I haven't seen anybody's like Labo VR creations online anywhere. Yeah. Like you can't share them, Parker. No, but like even <laughs> I feel like somebody would have made something to just like just show it somehow. I don't know because you can you, do the labo. I don't know. Yeah, you can't. Just, even, yeah, you can't even hit the share button. Oh, you can, but it's dumb. Like you, you gotta like go in the two D mode and then press right. the share button. True, and true. Then, yeah. So, but yeah, I figure like somebody would have done that kind of thing so far because I mean I feel like when the first labo sets came out, we saw pretty quickly some people doing stuff in the Toycon garage that was like right. eh, you know fairly dumb, but kind of cool at the same time or Listen, making cool songs song but, I made, yeah, yeah right so maybe it's just it'll take a while because the 
tool set's kind of complicated or something, or maybe nobody cares, but I just would have assumed we'd see something about that by now, but maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Um, but something else that we'll be seeing something about apparently pretty soon is uh, more reports on the smaller switch and a little bit on something else as well. So I'll read a quote here in a second, but Nikkei, the Japanese, they're kind of like the Japanese Wall Street Journal equivalent is my understanding. Um, right. And uh, so they talked about the that a less you know less expensive switch switch mini type situation is going to be coming out this fall and also that it will be dockable because we've heard reports one way or another on that so who's to say what it actually will be but it, if it's <laughs> if it's not dockable that's dumb it's i fully agree yeah i think if we actually have a question about this later so i'll save my thoughts on some of that um for down there but the part that was just interesting and not even necessarily worth talking about for a long time but um they also wrote so development on a next generation device that is fully model change of the current hardware will reportedly follow the less expensive model while nintendo is said to be trying out various things including operability and video expression movements operating system changes and so on development is currently in a state where it is not clear who will lead the creation of the concept according to one developer which sounds like a I, I don't know if you guys take this a different way than I do, but it sounds like a really vague way of saying, like, they're working on the actual next, you know, what comes after the Switch for in three years or whatever that is. I think that's a long way of saying a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like they always are saying that, like, oh, we're not, we're, we're always working on something, we're working on the next thing, but we're not going to say exactly what it is, mm-hmm. you know. Like they, we knew that they were working on the next thing the second this this thing came out. Yeah, I mean, and like es- especially with the Wii U, they were very public that they were working on the NX pretty early on because right. they were like, "Ooh, you guys, you don't really like this thing." So, uh, yep, we we got something else in the works, but I just it, they never yeah. when they have something doing real good, they yeah. never say we're working on something <laughs> else. Get ready, yeah. don't buy the thing we have out now. They're never mm-hmm. gonna do that. Especially if it's an iteration on what they yeah, have out now. They don't, they don't, like, specifically say... I feel like the only time they, like, blatantly denied that they were working on the next thing was with the Wii. Because the Wii, everybody's like, hey, you're working on an HD console? Blah, blah. They're like, nah, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> they also just straight comes right up around. lie. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah, if you have... Uh, d- don't worry. The, the, the regular DS is going to be sold right alongside the 3DS. So if you have the regular <laughs> DS, mean, we're still going to support it. To be fair, I wouldn't call that a lie because it's true. They do continue. Like, they still sell 3DS and they still trickle out games every no, once in a they, while. it's not anywhere close. It's definitely not. I think, but, it, yeah, I mean, it's like, like a technicality kind of thing where it's yeah. like it's technically true, but it's not like if you're expecting the same caliber of releases, that's just not going to happen. It's like how Madden yeah. comes out for Xbox 360 every year still. Right. right. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Which on but, that note, we're probably, uh, I'm imagining in the next, you know, because we'll find out about the end of fiscal year 2019 in what, a week and a half, something like that. I'm guessing probably they'll talk about 3DS being dead at that point. I don't know. Yeah. Because that language is mostly for investors. Yeah. It's, hey, this revenue stream that we have, like, we know we're still making free money off of this thing. Mm-hmm. We'll continue to make that. And they don't want to publicly publicly kill that off for their sake mm-hmm. um, until they can then go, hey, we have another $150 thing that we can sell to right. people or whatever. Um, so I think that's the biggest reason for it. Less so than them telling us like, Hey, don't throw away your 3ds yet. It's more <laughs> so like, Hey, give your little brother your 3ds and he, he can play all those games that you wouldn't let him play before, you mm-hmm. know? Yep. So it's interesting. Curious to see what all happens with that. Uh, we're also a little bit curious to see, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 on switch because Are we? I mean, <laughs> I don't know so if there anybody's was, the target audience in this uh, podcast. Will oh, yeah. is the only one I know who's like <laughs> cares about this. Yeah, like I play it. I like fighting games, uh, but like I don't know if like I'll. I'm not playing it like I play Smash. Let's just put it like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just think it's interesting that they're still being so coy with it because they've got the final build at this point. And so yeah. it's just interesting that they're still like I understand to some degree we the stuff just packs. Got but the like first gameplay trailer on switch for that just now yep. and it's super short like it barely shows any actual i mean it's it's all in-game footage but it yeah just barely shows any actual gameplay and then i think today some like longer gameplay was revealed or leaked or whatever 
and they had it taken down pretty much immediately. But like apparently so it looked weird. fine. <laughs> so like I don't know. I mean it's true, so like weird. it does look less good than the, you know, its counterparts, but yeah, not less good duh. enough. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's so weird. It's so weird cuz this isn't the Wii days anymore yeah. where one it doesn't look that much worse than what the other consoles do mm-hmm. and two people expect it at this point. Right. Like all people want at this point is that it runs. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, cool, it runs. That's fine. And the game runs. We saw it playing. Yeah, it's very bizarre. So, I mean, I, it'll be coming out next week. So, by next week, we'll know if people thought it ran well or not. But <laughs> from everything we've heard or seen, it seems like it is. I don't, so. Yeah, I don't think yeah. we've seen anything like any actual like direct feed footage of it. I, mean, I don't think Game did, Explain did, has any either. Did you not see anybody playing it at PAX? It, I saw people playing yeah, it at PAX. Yeah, but where's the footage? Hmm. It's definitely. I don't know. It's, it's not it's, probably it's, it's all off camera footage, or mm-hmm. uh, like they just released a trailer, mm-hmm. and it's all pre-rendered cutscenes. There's no right. actual gameplay. There was like yeah. three seconds interspersed of gameplay, but that doesn't really show a whole lot. Mm-hmm. So I'd assume that that is yeah. the part because. Uh, I mean, when we went to PAX, Mm -hmm. um, I got this thing from Nintendo saying like, hey, some stuff might be embargoed. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that this is one of those things. Because they did say that you can get direct feed footage, but some of the footage was going to be embargoed. Mm. Yeah. Well, there you go. So maybe that's one of those things. But I don't understand why, because the game doesn't look bad. Yep. I mean, I guess, you know, it's a question, too, of we know what to expect because we're entrenched in all the Nintendo Switch world stuff. So we and most other Switch players know, like, okay, it's not going to look as good, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be pared down, et cetera, et cetera. But maybe because they're in their developer worlds, you know, it's not obviously not a shock to them, but they don't realize maybe that everybody is so expectant of it. So they're being they're more afraid of backlash but the thing or something that's like that that's all i can think weird <laughs> is in that scenario then you have backlash you know like if you're hiding it from everybody yeah. and then here it is this inferior version that apparently nobody expected mm-hmm. but buy it anyways 59.99 yeah. or whatever right mm-hmm. like i feel like people would be a lot more angry at that than they would if you just came out in front of it I mean, and was like yeah. hey, this game doesn't look as good that's like a wwe 2k18 situation where it was like yeah. just garbage <laughs> and but they were trying to like hide it for so long and quietly release it like oh here oh it was here the whole time what are you talking about like no it was just bad yeah it's very dumb yeah so there's that oh also they the last fighter was leaked uh i i don't know maybe maybe by the time maybe now this is already information that's out but there you go um i guess i won't even say who did well it's yeah it doesn't matter if you don't want to know fast forward literally like five seconds frost is coming to the game neato I don't, don't know I don't who that know is. is. I don't know who that is at all. <laughs> no clue. So, yeah. Um, so, things keep happening. We also got Switch Software Update 8.0 this week. I mean, we might as well. Let, we can talk about that after we talk about everything else because that segues into your video. It sure does. Uh, so, these last two articles, before we get into that one, are both short. We had kind of talked about one of them already, but Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 got a release date. It's coming out July 19th. Which uh, it's, al- it's almost like uh, that that game is perfect for a certain YouTube channel that I know. And I feel like uh, if well, it's definitely certain, not the Wolf Den, that's for sure. If a certain uh, brother's not working on a video for that, then uh, another brother needs to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't make a video about that game, then I'm gonna fire something's him. up. He's out. <laughs> Are you guys excited to play that? Or have you played any of the other games in the Ultimate Alliance or X-Men Legends series? No and no. I mean, I'll play it, sure. Why not? But, like, I'm not chomping at the bit to play. Is mm-hmm. it, like, Bob, do you know anything about that game? I don't know Does anything about matter? it. I played, like, two seconds of the other Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, uh, and they're all right. I, I mean, I'm down to play a Marvel game, mm-hmm. but yeah. uh, and especially on the Switch, but uh, I, I just want to try it. I don't know how yeah. into it I'm going to be. What's the tie into the MCU? <laughs> Does this confirm X Men? Find out. What's the tie into the video game Marvel Universe that they're supposed to be building? <laughs> true. Oh, true. I guess none. I don't know. But I I did think this one was interesting. That um, so 
they showed off they they announced it first at the game awards and then showed a bit more of it in the february direct i guess and i watched that yeah. one with my wife and i was surprised that that was the game that she was excited she was like oh i'd play that with you it was like really oh, okay so that's Did she like the mcu yes so which makes that sense makes for sense, that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i mean it's hack and slashy so i could see that's you know you can kind of button mash and probably make your way through it fairly well so even if you know she's not super great at games or just doesn't play a whole lot i'm sure she'd be fine and then another one of my friends just happened to look more into it recently and was like dude i'm super excited about this game so it's like all right whatever i guess i'm getting it and we'll play it together or something but should be a fun like couch co-op thing in any case yeah and i think that's published by nintendo it is so i'll, yep. I'll probably play which that. i thought was very surprising mm-hmm. yeah interesting for such a license to be published by nintendo yep where is the other the like where's our spider-man give us the spider-man all right or, or i mean i'd be down for literally any individual hero yeah i know that's what i'm saying like our spider-man equivalent oh, okay. like i mean our spider -Man iron man PS4. vr was uh on psv oh my god <laughs> wolverine has some great games even the movie game was awesome hmm. which one uh origins wolverine <laughs> was yeah it was awesome that's weird yeah because the movie was not no the movie was horrible <laughs> but the game was actually really good i'm trying to think what marvel superhero would like feels like it would fit for nintendo the best because like spider-man obviously because of sony and stuff and them owning that license for the movies makes sense that that would be on playstation but i'm trying to think of like what what would be the best equivalent for nintendo for that kind of thing of like a one-off superhero I mean, something like I, fantastic I four I don't think they necessarily mm. even need one, though. Like You just said they needed of, one, AJ. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, but I'm saying, no, I'm saying I don't think they need that type of tie-in. Gotcha. Like, right, they don't yeah. need a thing of like, oh, like, Spider-Man and Sony. Yeah. They're already in bed. That makes sense. I don't think they need that. No, but like, I, I mean, think like, they something could just, that just... Be like, Captain Marvel, the video game, uh -huh. it's on Nintendo Switch. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You know, like... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see that. Um... It would just be fun. I would like that kind of thing a lot. And I'm excited about that game. They could um, do X-Men because X-Men was already like that was a yeah. Well, I mean, I guess this is kind of, you know, account. the continuation of that then in any case. Like maybe this is our equivalent to the Spider-Man game because that's, you know, that Spider-Man's, you know, open world kind of thing. And this is couch co-op, which is just fits better for the Switch. That's anyway. true, but I hate that. I Let's know. not, you know. <laughs> Because Breath of the Wild is the thing that it surely is, and it's great and wonderful, and we, we can love get it. other games like that. Yeah, <laughs> other games like that. It's very similar to Breath of the Wild is Ubisoft's game uh, thirteen. <laughs> They're self shaded. There you go. That's the tie-in. <laughs> uh, it's coming to all consoles. There we go. Neato. It's coming in November. We talked about it a little bit earlier. I I know next to nothing about it. So Bob, um, Will knows what this game is. Do you? What? <laughs> Do you know what thirteen is? Oh yeah, I know what thirteen is. Is it good? Uh, it's like a cult classic. A lot of people like it. I never heard of it in my life. I don't life. know if Will so. played that. But I just saw I think him he played a about, little huh? bit of it, but I think we have Killer 7. Mm. Is that connected? Yeah, Killer 7, uh, 13, and I think it has a tie-in to uh, freaking uh, No More Heroes. Oh, weird. Oh, yeah, because Killer 7 is um, Grasshopper Studios Pseudo. or Pseudo or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. Is, is 13 is also, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's Ubisoft. Don't know anything about it. So, <laughs> but it could, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. Am I, am I, did I just lie? Oh, my God. I made. I think I made this whole thing up. Oh, no. Uh, now everybody believes it. Way to go. So This fired. is the problem when we talk about Will stuff. <laughs> like, oh, Will knows about this. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely out of it. <laughs> so confirmed, Bob never played 13. He confused it with Kingdom Hearts like the rest of you. Uh, moving on. <laughs> moving on. So this is the last news bit. Uh, and it'll transition into a video thing and you guys' comments and whatnot. Uh, Switch software update 8.0 happened this week. Do any of these features, so the features that came with it were the save data transfers, uh, zooming, more icons, and sorting options in the all software stuff. Are any of these things that you guys will take advantage of? I don't care. Um, I use the sorting feature just as a thing to be like, what are the games that I played the longest ranked? Yep. And then after that, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Like the rest of this stuff, fine, I guess. I think yep. I think there's not enough. 
yeah there's not enough different options for me to care about like people want folders that's what everybody wants. That's what Parker's video is about. Yeah, that's Perfect. I'm right there Segway. with you, Bob. <laughs> so, so here's you guys' comments um, on the video and stuff. So yeah, I mean, for big, greater context, it was what are the last features that we want to see or that I'd like to see in any case showing up on the Switch. And the main one or the first one that I talked about in any case was folders, which for the me when I when I messaged him and was like, hey, thumbnail, would you like? <laughs> do you have anything that you want in this? He's like, I really want folders or something. I was like, okay. <laughs> I made the thumb down. There you go. Yeah, I like it's almost dumb to want it as much or just to want it at all. But at the same time, like it just makes sense for so many reasons. So I don't know. Um, so the questions that I asked at the end of the video were, you know, features you'd like to see return on the Switch or come at all. And also, if you had three folders, what would they be? Um, so Kamushku, Kamushku. Chamishku, Chamishku, whatever. Um, thanks for coming. Said, I still wish the Switch had an activity log like the 3DS had instead of estimated playtime. But for folders, I'd like media, completed games, and another folder. The estimated playtime is kind of garbage because it's not accurate yeah. at all. Yep. Also, you have to wait 10 days or whatever yep. for it to even pop up, which is weird. Yep. The whole thing. And like people's uh, like makeshift solution for that is to like sign up for the parental controls thing because that gives you like uh-huh. a, like a detailed activity log or whatever um or more detailed i guess mm-hmm. um but it's like kind of weird that that's not there because it was even on wii u well it's especially weird because obviously they're keeping track of it but they're not yeah. sharing it with you just for no good reason whether they i mean i think with this switch ui they just really want it to be a certain ver- variety of sleek or something like yeah. that. Um, but this just seems kind of like overkill, or not even overkill, just something weird that they're not bothering to yeah. to do that. So I don't, yeah, I just don't really understand why. Because I can see a lot of that other, like, you know, stuff like themes and folders. Like, I could see that clogging up the, like, the, the RAM for the UI right. and them not being able to keep that small footprint. But, like, the activity, like, I don't understand how that really impacts the uh, mm-hmm. footprint of the OS at all. No, yeah, I I really don't know. It's also one of those things where it's like, on one hand, why do I care about knowing exactly how much time I spend in a game? But regardless of why do I, like, I do, so <laughs> just, yeah. just do it. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a proud thing to be like, look, I spent 100 hours getting, uh, you know, just hopping around in an odyssey. Mm-hmm. Look, I and spent 400 hours in Breath of the Wild. Look, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> it's it's also a thing of like uh, people being like, I know about this game. I played it for X amount of hours, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's that's definitely one of those things. I forgot to list that in there, but that was I uh, Chemushku. Yes, I fully agree with what you said of the activity log and stuff. And it's just it's it's fun to see too. Like I. You know, at work, I have to keep track of my timesheet of like, I've spent this much time this week on this project and this much time on this other one and that kind of stuff for reporting reasons and so that you can see trends and all that kind of stuff. And like, this is Parker saying that like, hey, um, eventually I'm going to be reporting my hours <laughs> playing review keys. That's <laughs> right. Get it together, Nintendo, so I can. <laughs> but yeah, no. And the estimated time thing really is super weird. Um yeah, I actually I set up because uh, again I my wife just started actually playing on the Switch like by herself and whatnot, and so I set her up an account which she oh, was snap. like she graduated to her own account. Yep, and she was like, "Why do I need an account?" And I was like, "It it it shows you how long you've played a game and stuff." And she's like, "Oh, okay." She's like, "I don't <laughs> care," but you're like, "I do. I don't want yours overlap with mine." Listen. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't want people to know that I actually spent 400 hours playing Captain Listen, Boom. wait, you, mean you, you can mess up my <laughs> games. You need your own save files. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, but the folders and all that stuff. So, it, good comments. Um, next one, Goo881 says, the two most important folders for me would be games I probably won't play again and should delete if I need more space. <laughs> And games I got distracted from, but believe deserve another chance and should consider playing when I'm unsure what I want to play. Those are long names. <laughs> <laughs> True. 
Uh, then he said, I'm assuming I can leave games that don't fit in either category outside of any folder, but if not, then the third folder would be games I'm playing or expect to play again someday. Yeah, that um, these things would be nice. Uh, I, I think the I, biggest problem with n- not having folders is that you have one giant line mm-hmm. that you go through. Yep. Like it, It's just all of the games that you have played ever uh, mm-hmm. in chronological order from the last time you played it. And which I mean, mostly works for me <laughs> where it's like because a lot of times I play one, maybe two games at a time. Honestly, it works for me, too, until I need to get to like freaking uh, a game. I have get been. some arcade mm-hmm. archives. Yeah, footage. I'm like, oh, I got to open up Breath of the Wild. I got to I got to get some footage. Ooh, yeah. I got to go all the way, you know, back <laughs> instead of just going to yeah. like L, you know, that's true. I mean, and the sure. sorting features in the all software like helps that a little bit, but it still is like, you yeah, know, it doesn't, I mean, it would be nice for folders to make day to day usage. Like there's ways that it could make day to day usage better in the first place. I feel like, for example, I mean, for one thing, just knowing where stuff is in folders so that you don't have to even think about like, all right, I've played it, you know, four games ago. So I go down four games and then see it, but just like pop over to the third folder and go in there. But then the two examples that I gave in the video that I just, for me, are the ones that I feel like would be most realistic is sticking stuff in folders of like single player games or multiplayer games or something like that, where somebody's over and they can just see the multiplayer games folder and, you know, pick that out and then we'll just play something from there. Like it's kind of, you know, if if I have somebody who doesn't really know about games come over to the house and look at my GameCube collection or whatever, and they're like, "Oh, cool, this game! Like, can we play this one together?" I'm like, "Nah, sorry, that's just can, a single I mean, you player." You could even go deeper than that, really. You could be like, "These are like the co-op games. Mm-hmm. These are the competitive games." Yep. You know, like, you could even do something like that. Yep. Or and then the other scenario is like with the Disney Plus stuff and YouTube and Hulu and stuff being on there. Like, chiefly the one of the top two reasons I don't use YouTube on my Switch is that I don't like the idea of all the games getting bumped down and YouTube just hanging out up there at the top because it's, I don't know, like something about that's just annoying, whereas it would be nice to just have it in its one spot where it's like, it's sitting over there when I need it, but it's not like going to intrude on, you know, the more important things of games. (laughs) Yeah. So, yep. Uh, Charles Mendez says, I would have best games, good games, and do not touch games, but shortened to DNT games. And I commented on this to clarify because I was like, I'm assuming do not touch games is for other people not to touch, not ones that you just bought yourself. <laughs> and you were like, never going to touch these. <laughs> sure enough, that was that was correct. So why not just delete I have them, games though? where I'm like, I'm never going to touch these games, but I well, refuse to delete them. Be- right, because I want every- I want everything on my Switch at all times. <laughs> I like I'm like that, which I mean, not actively. I'm not actively like that with anything where it's like I refuse to delete this, but I just don't think to delete it mm-hmm. with my phone. Like that's the only place that I'm like that. Mm. But with my Switch, I'm like I'm never gonna play this game. Delete, <laughs> you know. Like um, even though I do have like the the 400 gigabyte SD card, which is already almost full, wow. which is gross. I mean, I think I've kind of. I've definitely got ones that I'm fine deleting or whatever because I know, especially like single player type games, if I know I'm not going to go back to this game for a little while or something, even if I'm in the middle of it, but just haven't, like Dark Souls, like I dropped that a while ago just because I was working on, you know, like Smash Bros came out and then so I was like, because you didn't get good. Apparently not. I, yeah, (laughs) I got to a point and I was like, all right, Smash Bros is out. I'm just not going to get back to this until I've got a good bunch of time to get back to it so i've you know was fine to delete it off there but then there's games like mario kart that i also haven't touched in a really really long time but i don't want to not have on there in case yeah yeah, and playing co-op with somebody you know without internet around or something like that i'm just paranoid that it could be available on the eShop one day so i just leave everything Mm -hmm. yep (laughs) (laughs) see and that's the thing like the games that i delete are the ones that's like I don't care about this game. Yeah. I'm done with it. I'm never going to touch it again. It's not going to happen. So like it being there is really just serving as a thing to be like, I get a lot of games. You I know, need to have like, all oh, of my it. games all of the time. I need all of <laughs> for my the games. backlog. Yes, for the backlog. <laughs> yep. Well, I don't have a. I don't have a hit YouTube show about the games I that I own. Hit. So. I don't know about that. Hit. It's a hit. You did add PAX Live in Boston, Massachusetts. Hey, guys, this is the part of the show where I give out a Hello Neighbor Steam Key. Zero (laughs) V-E-7-3-C-E-A-E-F-H-G-D-Q-P. There you go. The Hello Neighbor. 
<laughs> the funny thing is, I actually talked to Parker about doing that. Yeah. It's like randomly being like, here's a code, <laughs> you know? I was just in so, my email. I got it. It's an email. It's an alpha. Do you got the, is it the secret uh, neighbor? Secret thing? neighbor. Easter alpha is here. Oh. Yep, I got that too. They sent a bunch and of And that would just work W E T P J B A F Z F Z F R Z Z. Congratulations. There it is. Put it in your Steam folder. Uh code to Virtual Boy Tennis. Uh L L Z one one two Pi. Yeah, all the numbers of Pi to the to the end. There you go. See, like very long like specific to us thing bob was like they got to see <laughs> like with oh, the switch yeah, yeah. keys <laughs> <laughs> because we were getting all these switch game codes and they always started with b and then like a year in one started with c i was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> how far Good we've step. come and there's still c now i haven't seen it okay. i haven't seen a d yet okay so we're probably not anticipating they would actually get to z even by the end of the lifespan I don't know. Yeah, I think probably any not. minute now we're going to get D. Hmm? Switch is going to be a fourth pillar, and that's when we're going to get Z. That's right. Also, was A, was a all out. like a... Uh, like, Alpha, like, like pre-release? Yeah. Like, mm. Did they waste A on possibly. pre-release, though? Possibly. That's a whole letter. Yeah. They've only got 26 of them. You got to cherish those babies. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, maybe they have a hard stop. They're like, we're only making 5,000 games... <laughs> <laughs> um and we're allocating letters think about how uh, many games they gotta go th- they gotta give out for them to get to see so many games it's wild too many games but, i mean then again you got oh my but god sh- <laughs> um but you got you also got to consider the fact that it's like it's not just codes that they're giving us like it's also like the hundreds of thousands to millions of people yeah. that are buying games and they yeah, get but that's a lot true. like how, how many digits is a switch game key also, I wonder if like games that you buy on the eShop are assigned keys. I think they are. So that can hmm. also factor into that. G- game keys are weird. Like like they Very. like they like you'd think it's it's like, oh, it's just a digital game. There's no like actual like there's nothing behind it. It's just like a it it's just a mm-hmm. code. You download it. There's no inventory or anything, but they keep an inventory on every single key. So those yes. all cost money. You know, even the ones that yeah. they give to us for free. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's why a lot of times we're like, "Yeah, we don't have any more of those for that region." Like, mm-hmm. can, would you be fine with an Australian <laughs> key? Yeah, it's weird. It's so weird because it's it is just it's just a it's software. It's not real. Mm-hmm. It's not tangible. Yeah. but like they keep an inventory on it. So that's the Switch OS thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Henley has another comment. He sure about does. Oh, our best, our our best guy. What, what dumbass, stupid best ass pie. things? Yeah, is dumbass guy stuff. <laughs> Eric Henley says, I just want folders like my PS4. I've got a games <laughs> folders, an apps folder, and that way I don't have to sort through a jumbled mess based on what I played last. I also want custom themes. Nintendo, please add custom themes. What, did, what, what a bozo, say. am I right, guys? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bozos. That's, that's a word that you like using now. I huh? used it before. <laughs> My new thing. I don't want to say where you used it. I don't want to say that. My new thing. I, I called somebody on Twitter a bozo. Mm. Yeah, you did. Look at this bozo. But in a DM, so I don't know if you want I to say that. I don't want to say who it was. <laughs> it was somebody I shouldn't have said it about, but he's a bozo. Well, I, I mean, forgive you. True. Thanks, man. It's true. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was Parker. You know, yeah, let it all out. Um, but anyway, speaking of letting it all out, yep. it's time for the Q&A. That's right. We're not going to respond to Eric. No. Okay. We can respond to Eric any other day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's the treatment you get when you follow Fanatics 4 for a long time. <laughs> also, Wolf Den, mostly Wolf True. Den, because we talked to him, what, three, four times a Probably. week? Probably. Mm-hmm. A lot. So, talk to us about custom themes there. <laughs> <laughs> for the record, Eric, I fully agree. I yeah, also okay, want I don't to know. your I don't thoughts like, since you don't, don't talk to him four times needs a week. Themes. It just feels fun. You just get like a background, like, okay, cool, man. Oh, that's it. Oh, 100%. That's all it is. <laughs> my background for I my thought- work computer and my personal computer are Breath of the Wild stuff because it's just it's just fun. And that's literally it. I said, I got a theme for my 3DS. It's 
Super Smash Brothers for 3DS uh, theme, and I literally never changed it. I just picked that one. I was like, okay, this is the one that I'm going to have, that's and that's what it. Most people do even on yeah, PlayStation. I would get a Breath of the Wild and just leave it forever. <laughs> So it's like implement this entire store with all these varied themes, so I can buy one and never I, use I anything else. I the regular else. one on PlayStation, just the regular blue. I have what a bozo, uh, <laughs> Spider. <laughs> I have the Spider Man one because it automatically set it to that. It's like okay, I'm fine. Nice. You know now what else is fine? The yes, <laughs> the thing you were about to say. Q and A. Um, you guys can answer questions or <laughs> answer questions. Ask, That's the one. Answer everybody you else's questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, so true. Uh, we sent out things on Discord and AJ does on YouTube like he did this week and asks like, Ayo, hey, give us some questions and we will talk about the answers to those questions on the podcast. So these first three are from YouTube. Um, one of them, uh, v Kermodi Kuma V says, That's AC. Yo, you don't know AC. AC is my uncle. He's Bob's age. He's also 30. I'm not 30! <laughs> <laughs> so this 30-year-old said, so you said this is, wait, this is your uncle? No, AC's not 30. Bob's 30. AC's also like, no, he's younger than Bob. He's, he's younger, younger than me? Than Bob. Yeah, he was born in December. And he's your but same uncle? Year. Yes. Wait, born in December, but the same year. Yes. So I was born in September. Yes. So he's older than me. No, he's not. No, he's younger. Oh, <laughs> December man. comes after September, Bob. That's what happens. You what up, start losing it once you turn Ew, 30. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe it. Uh, dates math is weird. I'll give you that for sure. Mm. Um, but yeah, this person, I'm confused. Is this AC your uncle or yes. is this not AC? Yes, okay. it's AC. So, got it. He says, yo, go easy on him, man. Tell him I said hi. hi. Cool. Not a question, but thank you, AC. You're the bomb. I assume. Uh, I assume. <laughs> He's okay. He's fine. He's fine. He's uh, Miles Harrison. Miles Harrison says, "Bob, are you ever coming to New Jersey? Never. Also, do you go to Smash tournaments? I'm never coming to New Jersey. Place sucks. No, <laughs> that's not true. You you used to go to New Jersey to pick up Jerry. No, I went there to pick up a car once <laughs> for." Jerry. All right, we're not talking about that. <laughs> uh, bagels are nice in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I'd go there for a bagel. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming this is a subtle overlapping question, too, of like, are you going to show up at a Smash tournament in Jersey? Because that's probably where he's going to be. Are there Smash tournaments in Jersey? I don't know. I'm trying to keep like an eye out where everywhere. these Smash tournaments are. The problem is a lot of them are on Wednesdays. Mm, and I do yes, this and that's, on Wednesdays. That's not I don't want to miss that. Good. That's not good. Just have Smash Bros. tournaments on Saturday and that's I'm going it. to Vegas and there's one at the arena there every Wednesday. They do like, you know, like a tournament. Nice. And I want to do that. But then we'd have to cancel Wolf Den Live. Hmm. But like, I might want to do that. <laughs> How dare you. Just have Will do it. No. You know? <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> Falcon asks, what are the deets for the tourney this weekend? Wow, what a cool way of saying words. Uh, I filled out the thing, but I, have, I haven't I have heard anything. That's what I'm supposed to say. Um, this, isn't a really, this isn't really a podcast question, but before I forget again. so I've actually been talking to the mods during this podcast and saying, hey, leave me alone. I'm doing a podcast. But, but um, <laughs> the, uh, it's, we, I think, so we... we we got the stage ban list. I got that in the email. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I added. So it's the list that we made at PAX for the stages that we're going to play. Um, right. but let me back up. We're doing a tournament this weekend. Uh, on, yes. uh, we're, 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 we're doing like the prelims on Saturday and then we're streaming Wolfden. on uh, YouTube.com slash Wolfden. We're streaming the uh, finals. Um, <laughs> but... What time are wait? So they probably already missed out on the on the yeah you missed you, you, this comes well, out the, on the Saturday. signups can't, uh, ended an hour ago. Well, rip. So you can watch the stream. But That's here's, what's here's pertinent what's cool information about that, to though. you. Uh, we were only going to pick twenty eight people, and right. only twenty eight people signed up. Hey, look at oh, that! So perfect. Uh, there you go. Uh, so what was I going to say? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. They were saying some some stuff about that because. Apparently, some people didn't like fill out their PayPal email because uh, you know there's a cash prize. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. Ooh. I gotta figure that out. 
those people is yeah. not getting money. Yeah. Is how that's what F Zero Kid is gonna get an email or a Discord notification in like two seconds. So nice. They'll figure that out. He'll 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 there be in it. He'll is. have a good time. It'll be great. Yeah. And then me and AJ He's just right. get thrown right into the finals because we <laughs> yeah. cause we're you know, we can cheat. <laughs> Truth. True. All right. So uh from Discord now, Patar thirty five. What's up, Patar? Ask, does Nintendo not like Bob because he pronounces Mario wrong? I pronounce Mario just Strong fine. Possibility. Thank you very much. <laughs> Strong possibility. So here's the thing. I I, I think I, you were talking about this on the Wolf Den at some point a bunch of months ago or something, um, but how you were saying you and Woods beat him up, Woods, whatever. Oh, my God. Say, we're going to do this now? <laughs> <laughs> I think it. Okay. So here's the thing that's just interesting to me that you say You, you also say you say the same way. Reggie, also. <laughs> do we not so say you, the same? <laughs> I think so. I think technically you do, but okay. the he says it in an Australian act. So my, my mom grew up in Australia, so that's just fun little tidbit thingy. Um, so having a little bit of familiarity with the accent, I think he says it Mario, but with an Australian accent, it sounds like Mario. Right. But but if he were to say it Mario or Mario, like kind of the way you do, it would it would be Mario. I think I think what's Australian happening accent. is it's the context. It's that. Every other exactly, word is yeah. in an Australian accent. <laughs> yeah. So basically what we're saying is Wood's accent is way more dumb than Bob's. <laughs> so like Bob saying one specific thing really dumb is like, what? But Wood, it's like, uh, everything else you say is stupid. So it's just context. Context. It's like <laughs> British people say it uh, Mario also. Right. But mm-hmm. it's because every other word, it's like, oh, okay, he's just British. But like when I yeah. do it. Yeah. They like, also say garage and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um. I, I made that video with with Woods, and I was like, uh, I said you should say Mario just like me, so everybody's you know ha ha ha, and then he's like, I don't say it like you at all, dude. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You say it just like me. And then he filmed a video of himself. He's like, I say Mario, dude. You say Mario, and I was like, what? Well, you say the same thing twice? Am I crazy? Man, so that was a fun thing. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> Needless to say, uh, it's, it's cr- like Re- Reggie it's, alone. It's crazy talking to people here too, because everybody in New mm-hmm. York says Mario, right? And then when yeah. I when I show how other people say it, they're like, "That's weird. Why did they, why is that?" <laughs> or or like even better, an Italian person. You show an Italian person, look, they wanted me to say it, Mario. They're like, they go nuts. <laughs> like that's not the name. That's a different name. <laughs> Uh huh. That's really funny. It's like I there was a like very British girl that went to my school in uh in high school, and she like had been there for a year or so. And uh, most of the people in my school were well, it was like an international school, so there were people from kind of all over. But like the general accent most of the time was kind of American ish, and so she like you know her accent went a little bit less British in the time that she was there, and then went back to the uk a year or two later talk to her friends and they're like wow you're like so american now you don't even sound british anymore now you sound american and then she came back and was like guys i sound american we're like no you <laughs> legitimately do <laughs> not you still sound very very british i, I, I just I a know little there's bit some less. things where like uh if british people like live in america and then they go back to like uh you know the uk they mm-hmm they start to go fall back into their accent harder Mm, and then they come yeah. back to America and then they have the uh, even harder of an accent. They're just a parody <laughs> of themselves at yeah. that point. Yep. But anyway, yeah. uh, Ma- Mario, if you want to get into it, is Japanese. Yep. So it's oh, how they pronounce yeah. it that really. Also, I don't, it's just who cares about how people pronounce things. If you understand what I'm saying, then, yeah. uh, then it's fine. Then you get it. It's fine. That's true. Mm-hmm. And the Japanese Very don't true. have uh, an, an AR sound. So uh, it's Mario, you you mother effers. <laughs> <laughs> now you're in Katana Zero. Ravix <laughs> says, with the rumors of new Switch systems inbound, do you think Nintendo will also revise some of their accessories, such as Pro Controller, Dock, etc.? And what would you like to see changed slash improved on those accessories? Um, I'd assume they would have to revise the Dock. I, I think it just depends. Pro controller, okay. Uh, Raise of fans, just out of curiosity, I don't see them changing the pro controller yeah. besides just making new models. I don't see them changing yeah. the pro controller either. The pro controller is okay. fine, uh, and yeah. we have a lot of third-party alternatives for that. But uh, mm-hmm. they're 
We also have a lot of third party docs. We, we, need, <laughs> we need a different doc, doc design. Yes. There's no reason to have the one we. I was going to do my next video on uh, doc enclosures. I don't want to mm. talk about it too much because mm. I'll spoil the video. But yeah. uh, it, right. it, it's the, the doc, it, it's this little tiny, like, inch and a half square. You mm -hmm. know, that's yep. the guts. That's the only part of the dock that matters. Meanwhile, we have this giant plastic monstrosity. So, like, we, if we get a new switch, we should absolutely get uh, a new dock design. Yep. I think by yeah. far the biggest chance we have of getting a new dock design is if there is a switch mini that's a different form factor, then they'd want to make something more you know portable or whatever and then that would be a feature of it mm -hmm. as opposed to i think like if the dock had been just like a cable or something like that from the beginning it would have felt a little bit less like retrospectively it would have felt less like oh this is you know a home console doing stuff right. it would feel more like a handheld that you're plugging in kind of like a, a vita type situation i guess or you know uh super super game boy or something like that or like, so a, I, like even like a phone makes, with like airplay or something yeah like it makes sense for marketing reasons why that was what they led off with but it seems like you know pretty early on they could have just <laughs> gone ahead and made something more convenient i i think if they I, I would have liked one if, especially if they go with a more portable design they need to make a new dock that's uh uh shorter uh horizontally mm -hmm. so they would make a new dock that can fit the old switch but the old dock can't fit the new switch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think yeah, I agree. Right. And I would suspect probably, I mean, we've talked about this a couple of times, but like that the Switch Mini or whatever, assuming that it can be docked, probably just doesn't come with a dock and you would just buy one peripherally. Um, I mean, maybe it does. Which I don't know. It depends on the price point. Dumb. That would be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's tricky because they could go at this, like there's so many different, you know, with like a an iteration on a PlayStation there's it it's more straightforward like they're either gonna take stuff out and make it cheaper or yeah. make it have more things and be more expensive and that's like all right basically like what they do with like the revisions mm -hmm. less so than like the this is like a small upgrade like it's it's usually the model that i go for with the like quote unquote like hd twin variant of it like mm -hmm. the xbox and the playstations they pretty much are just like let's take out all the flashy dumb stuff that you don't actually need like the touch sensitive buttons mm -hmm. and like that sort of thing that's pretty much the biggest things that they take out that like cut costs and then they get like cheaper parts for manufacturing and all that mm -hmm. um for the switch i would assume like just them making it smaller would inherently cut costs mm -hmm. yeah there's a uh, there's just so many variables i feel like to go with but what I can't even think besides Pro Controller and Dock. What other accessories, even theoretically, would they revise? Uh, maybe I mean Joy-Con, I guess. Yeah, power supply is. Is there a way to you know make a similarly oh, built power supply but be smaller? They should definitely. Oh, but uh, then you got problems. That they should definitely revise the power supply if they're gonna mm -hmm. make a new switch. But then you can't use this old power supply on mm. new switch yep. even though it's the same port because yeah. so yep. now we go now we're getting into the weeds here uh the <laughs> getting this some nerd yeah. stuff so yeah the switch uses uh or, well it, it has usb uh c as the connection mm -hmm, right. uh usb c is supposed to have a standard power delivery protocol it's called usb pd power delivery mm -hmm. And that's a standard set across all devices. However, all of the whole slew of devices just don't abide by that standard for whatever reason. Um, yeah. The switch only half abides by it. It like kind of abides by it. It do, it has all of these different errors that just end up working out. So nobody knows how to make a third party charger or a third party dock correctly. And that's something that uh, would definitely need to be revised in a new version. But then you have a lot of confusion on which charges work with what. And yeah. you have people bricking their switches, plugging an actual official Nintendo Switch charger into the wrong switch. Yeah, I mean, no, and yeah, at that point, just custom, or consumer confusion is just such an issue. The only way I can see them getting around, like doing that for the Switch Mini or something, is somehow making the dock inherently use a 
you know a specific cable or something like that like it comes as the charging cable being part of it or something along those lines i don't know but then that dock yeah, isn't they, usable like, with an old switch or something like, like that they could just do like some type of like arbitrary like thing that stops you from plugging this cable mm-hmm. or whatever into the other thing like, like a how physical they stop yeah Right, like how 3DS, you can't put 3DS games in a regular DS because it has that little, like, mm-hmm. extra protrusion. Yeah, they would need yeah. to make a different port. Right. Mm-hmm. Which which sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, I mean, like, it could still be USB-C. But, but also, also Nintendo but is... Just, like, what kind it, of different? Nintendo's, mm-hmm. like, known now for just not including a charger at all with the new console. So, right. like, it's yeah. entirely true. possible That's that true. we'll get a new Switch and there just won't be a charger with it and they'll expect you to use the old one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's also possible. Yep. Interesting. Uh, per- Although, mm-hmm. it would be weird for them to do that. Like, that would be very I, weird. Because, yeah. like, 3DS is less dangerous for them to be like, yeah, just, you know, go go and buy a charger. <laughs> and then they could buy a, three, a third-party one, and they'll be fine. Yeah. I, but with the Switch... Because they did this thing in Netflix. Japan with the, you know, like, releasing the handheld-only part. But that really was marketed as only, like, an additional Switch for your house kind of a thing. Which, right. like, okay, you probably have all the other bits already. Um but if they're releasing it as like here's something to introduce a whole new demographic to the switch then i mean again there's precedent (laughs) they've definitely done it before but i i would not see them doing it but it's not to say it couldn't happen anyway it's just like if they acknowledge how dangerous it is to plug it into like other third-party stuff that doesn't abide by their specific like uh skew of the standard Mm -hmm. uh then that could get dangerous because if people are buying this thing and they're trying to cut cost you would assume that they would try to cut cost on the charger too. Right. It's it's really weird. They they use a very <laughs> standard plug, but they're really adamant about right. how you can't use third party plugs. Mm-hmm. Was it? I I could be wrong on this, and Bob, you'd probably know better. Um, is it? Was it that they just? finished manufacturing it or whatever before the standard was like officially put together no the, the standard was put together a long time ago because it, it's it, it, uh <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's an android thing you know like androids gotcha. use yeah. USB C and 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 they android phones kind of developed the standard or or, or made mm-hmm. it that we needed a standard and still gotcha. a lot of devices don't abide by the standard so it's not really that weird the weirdest part is that there are so many errors that you get when you try to plug in your switch like there, there's all of these like it's it's messing things up behind the scenes that you don't realize is happening every time you charge mm-hmm. your switch it just ends up working out fine you know <laughs> it's yeah. like a car crash where the car ends up on all of its wheels at the end and drives off no problem happens yeah so so every time to- every time you plug your switch in uh-huh it's a disaster <laughs> yeah yeah man well i'm i'm definitely curious i mean it seems like with all the rumors and stuff we'll be finding out about all this stuff within the next you know four or five months probably i don't know if it would be at e3 or a little later than e3 but i I don't know it could go either way because nintendo has done that in the past where it was a little bit after Mm -hmm. like with the um the 2ds exactly and everybody thought it was a joke and Reggie just straight up showed it to mm-hmm. people at IGN and was like, hey, look at this. Yep. And they're like, ah, that's, a, that's <laughs> not real. <laughs> I, I think it, I think I it'll mean, be like yeah. a month or two after E3. Yep. I mean, the SNES Classic was also, you know, that was, I think, in September or something. No, it was like they announced it July, released it September or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. So right. I feel like probably, especially with the amount of stuff that they have to announce at E3 anyway, with all this, these games that we still don't really know anything about, but are apparently supposed to come out this year, it makes more sense to me that it would come out after. But, I don't know. Uh, another question from Patar says, which indie character do you think has the best chance to become a Smash fighter? Indie character. Shovel Knight. Um, Minecraft Steve. He counts. Mm. He's not an indie character. He was. He was at one point, I was thinking Cuphead. At one point he was. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, I was thinking Cuphead, but that automatically disqualified it in my head <laughs> that he's technically a Microsoft character. Uh, it, it's um, Box Boy. I don't Box th- Boy has the best chance. Oh, but he's not indie either. He's a how laboratory thing. 
I, he's a, a small i guess it kind of depends what you yeah i mean because independent does imply not just like small budget but because he's a small budget game but he's not a, like dylan's rolling western same kind of thing like he's a small budget yeah. game but he's not a you know that's, separate non-nintendo franchise or independent in that like that sense that's so the problem is that there's no japanese indie games <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah they just all get swooped up, like snipper yeah. clips. I mean, well, even snipper clips. I don't even think that was Japanese. I don't know. I, I probably i I'd say for this maybe um, no more heroes. Uh, Travis. Yeah, but but that's published by Nintendo. I mean, but his origins were. It's uh, confusing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think if Shovel Knight Shovel didn't, Knight. I don't think yeah. I don't think anything's going to. At least not in I Ultimate. Think, I think a lot of people would be like, Shovel Knight is this, this trophy, but they do stuff like that all the time. Where they're like, hey, this character's in the game, and he's also in the background of this stage, and when he's in the game fighting, he's not there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's like, well, you're fighting with Shovel Knight, he just doesn't appear as an assist mm-hmm. trophy. Or he subbed out with, like, Shield Knight or something right. as an assist trophy. So, yeah. I- I looked up a list of Japanese indie games and uh, they're all they all look terrible. Um, <laughs> except for Tiny Metal. You remember that? Okay. Yep. That's like no. uh, an Advanced Wars type of game. Yeah. Although that one apparently was pretty terrible too, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I heard bad things about it. <laughs> yeah. Hadiful Boyfriend. <laughs> so Do you go. remember Hadiful Boyfriend? No. That's, yeah, when, yeah, that's, the, that's the bird dating that's sim. That's the bird. Yep. And that's, that's the only ones that actually catch my eye that i know of <laughs> the bird that's what you know we already got uh well i'm not gonna next gonna question <laughs> question <laughs> next question is a uh, is a burb uh, burb <laughs> a bird uh bab what's your favorite type of game what's your favorite game in that genre so this is from falcon who is also f-zero kid who you saw up there earlier uh he's a fake fan <laughs> what's my <laughs> favorite type of game I know this answer uh-huh should I say platformer? I guess a platformer. A 2D, 2D side-scrolling platformer. And my favorite Clearly. game mm-hmm. in that genre. Um, it's it. I'm split between the original Super Mario Brothers and Super mm-hmm. Mario Maker. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just mm-hmm. straight I'm up so Super surprised. Mario Maker. I'm so surprised. <laughs> I'm I feel shocked. like I say this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Good stuff. Crunch Topher asks, yes, I have a question for Bob. My question is why? Why do why are any of us still here, Crunch Topher? Just to suffer? Yes. That's a man. That's yeah, well, Crunch Topher, he's he's here to uh sub in for Grimhane when he's not there to say things about you. Good stuff. Thanks, thanks, Crunch Topher, for not being Grimhane. Or <laughs> yes. I don't know. Yes, exactly that. <laughs> Just kidding, let me give him a hand. Uh, last but not least, that cybered guy, our good friend Dan says. Who's that? Gun, question mark. We talked about That's it before. It. Is it gun? Is it airsoft gun? Are there bullets? Mm-hmm. We'll never know. Because nobody can give me a straight answer and cite the source. It's a gun. I gave you a I gave you an answer. I, it's I a need gun. the He's cite a gun. sourced. <laughs> you, you know what I'm citing? I'm citing the fact that when you shoot somebody in Smash Bros., it does damage. That's it not what like happen with airsoft damage. gun. No, it doesn't. That's not okay, true. Sorry, one point four. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can get people. You with can. You. It, it is. It is great. It is a great weapon. It's not great on the ground, but it's good if you get it's people. It's pretty with good you. against somebody like Falcon because it even yeah because it even gets well, Falcon Ganon. kick, which is insane. Yeah. That's dumb because Razor Leaf doesn't even do that. But I mean, hey, maybe that's even more proof that it's a real yeah, gun. Because mm-hmm. a little airsoft pellet should not go through a flaming kick <laughs> <laughs> or stop a flaming kick. Uh, but you know what can stop a, a flaming kick? The end of the podcast. <laughs> uh, that's where we're at. Uh, you can subscribe to Bob YouTube.com slash that cyber uh, channel. Um, in uh wolf den but just watch the comic videos they come out on wednesday yes, at 10 a.m do that time. please <laughs> um only just watch the comic videos yes and and the backlog yes, too please. i guess um also you can follow bob on twitter where he says all types of things that makes nintendo yeah like today i less. retweeted uh sonic uh, uh it was videos from uh, sonic adventure 2 where he's <laughs> 
<laughs> I think they like dubbed it over with Alex Jones and he's just cursing a lot. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that's where you can find bob uh you can follow us too all that stuff's linked in the description and also in the pinned comment above and if you're on the podcast services you should go on our youtube and click the subscribe button if you're on youtube you should go to the podcast services and rate us there and leave a, a thing you know what i mean you need will <laughs> you need will to come in here and give you the, give the spiel for you yeah do do all the spiel um goodbye <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs>